Hello, welcome to another motherfucking stream. How about it? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, hello, Mr. Botka, Nitrix Life Out 9, yet an of John. John. Hello. Uh, dear Pandas, uh, did, did I miss anyone? Bill Janul. Uh, Masters, by the way, one life's left. Thank you, thank you so much for the raid. Ivan Ho, Ronak Metav, uh, Soding TOS, hello, hello, Kashe, welcome, welcome, really glad to see you, Kashe. Blur B, hello, hello, welcome, 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 apparently Potatoes, hello, hello, hey, hey, welcome. Uh, Takeo Serimon, welcome, welcome, really glad to see you all today. So, today, is uh wednesday if i'm not mistaken that means today according to the schedule uh, schedule we are uh continue to develop virtual machine in c so um yeah you can find the source code of this virtual machine here uh, the purpose of this virtual machine is to then use in our uh language in our lisp in the future uh, but for now, we're just enjoying a recreation of programming in C, right? So there, there is some vague purpose like down the horizon, but who cares about it because we are enjoying programming in C. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's continue. Let's continue. So the, the virtual machine, uh, let me actually do something like TMUX. Uh, actually consists of several components right um so it has a compiler from our assembly for that virtual machine down to the byte code of the virtual machine um right and then you can use the emulator of the virtual machine to uh, interpret this uh byte code and also we have a disassembly from the byte code uh, that you can uh, run on the uh, on the bytecode files to inspect what they do exactly and yeah all of that is actually written completely in c um i, I recently actually removed the make file so now you build with the with this sage script because uh we had too many problems with different platforms we're trying to compile it on right because we're trying to compile it on um linux mac os windows freebsd and the easiest and the most cross-platform way to do that is probably just a you know POSIX uh, compatible shell script because uh, different plat platforms have different makes with different extensions and they're all fighting uh, for being a standard and whatnot so it's, it's, it's a shed show right it's a shed show let's just use it like a shell script and even then uh, we still need to have a, we need to have a separate uh, shell script for uh, Microsoft Visual Studio so uh, yeah <laughs> Anyway, so we have a bunch of examples. Uh, we have a bunch of examples on what you can do. For example, um, what's the most interesting one? Uh, probably calculating the pi numbers, right? So this is the bytecode, by the way. This is how bytecode looks like. The assembly itself uh, looks like this. So this is our assembly that we developed ourselves. Um, uh, it has comments, it has instructions, it has labels, and it has a uh, preprocessor directives like you can include other files into the translation process um, on top of that um, so if you take a look at the Fibonacci example you can define some constants uh, like this you can define n and then you can just use, use it here so it's like more or less proper assembly uh, is he finally writing an assembly I already wrote an assembly uh, today we're gonna uh, con uh, expand in it and making it better um, so yeah that's basically how it works so we can try to compile everything uh, yet again I, I have reflexes like i have i can nothing uh, i can do nothing about my reflexes so i just got used to make doing make minus b and now i can just do that thing all right so we can try to run uh, some of the examples for example fibonacci numbers uh right and here they are we generated a bunch of fibonacci numbers i wish i could switch to the mode where i can scroll uh yep that's pretty much it uh, that's pretty much it. So let me see if I can pour a cup of tea. Maybe I just need to wait a little bit. Nah, I think it's alright. I think it's alright. So let's just pour a cup of tea and I'll continue implementing this thing. Nice zoom. Mm hmm. So we had a, uh, a couple of specific uh, issues 
in my mind to implement. Uh, specifically, I want you to start working on a static memory. Uh, start working on static memory because our machine well the plan was to implement a bunch of native functions that can allocate memory and so uh, you can manipulate this memory but I don't think it ultimately convenient so it would be uh, better if the virtual machine supported some sort of like a, like a static memory like a pool of static memory and a bunch of instructions to actually access that memory and uh, modify it right and then we can have native functions that can ac uh, accept pointers to the internal static memory and fetch something out of that memory um, and do something with it. So one of the ideas would be that uh, you would render an image into the static memory, right? And then the program that is running virtual machine would use that static memory as an image and uh, display it somewhere. And uh, I just realized that I'm reinventing WebAssembly. <laughs> But I think uh, the idea behind my my virtual machine is a little bit cooler than WebAssembly um, because it has a single stack for everything and no registers. Um, in WebAssembly, there's no like explicit registers, but the arguments of the functions are like a array that is random, uh, accessed randomly through indices, which is not particularly cool in my opinion. I don't know, not particularly interesting. <laughs> Uh, mm, mm, any tips for where one would start learning assembly particularly intel manual so yeah intel manual just start learning it from here uh start reading it from the beginning and uh you will know assembly and how to program x86 64 uh processors right so it's, yeah it's it's the, the complete reference guide on how to program an assembly pretty much really recommend it um all right so um yeah let's try to work on something so did i fetch the latest changes mm -hmm. okay so i did a little bit of a cleanup of screen uh i didn't implement any particular features though um just cleaned up some stuff um you know just re rearranged some things renamed some functions and I think I forgot to remove uh, one of the branches, one of the branches that I was working on. Yeah, yeah, I forgot to do that. So I'll have to do, quickly do that and fetch this thing one more time. Okay, uh, and let me merge origin master. Let me merge origin master. Um, okay, so it's a little bit hard in here. I think, uh, what's the weather in the Novosibirsk? Weather Novosibirsk. I think it's becoming warmer. Yeah, it's becoming warmer. It's a little bit hot right now. So maybe at, at some point we're going to do a switcheroonie and I'm going to actually change to a t-shirt. <laughs> I've already done that before on the stream, but I think I will have to do that again. Uh. All right. So, um, yeah, let's rebuild everything. Oh, cat fucking damn it. Like, um, this shit is going to bite me in the ass every fucking time. Uh, all right, so <laughs> I keep using make instead of build. I keep using make instead of build. Uh, where is the issue for the static memory? Where is the issue for the static memory? Here it is, a static memory. There we go. It's issue 48. Okay, go. Uh, issue 48. Uh, and... God damn, I think. Oh shit. Did they merge everything? Oh, I think I was merging in the, in the correct thing. Okay. So the branch 48, and uh, I'm gonna go to the bm.h. And in the division, in the definition of the virtual machine, in the definition of the virtual machine, um, I think it's defined somewhere. No, this is not the definition. The definition is somewhere here. Here it is. So we already have a stack defined within the virtual machine. Stack just stores the uh, the values, 64-bit values. Uh, they can be assigned unsigned integers, uh, floating points like with double precision or pointers. Then we have a separate buffer that holds the program instructions. That is, that is not accessible uh, through any uh, any instructions at all. So the program cannot modify itself. So we have like security measures in place. 
you cannot just treat the data as program or program as data they have to be in separate buffers you know uh we know a thing or two about security <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I know nothing about security. Oh, and by the way, I studied to use booleans in, in C program. Is that is that a canonical way to program in C? Uh, I studied to use booleans. <laughs> because I, th I thought like semantically it would look better, right? Because it shows the intention, right? So even though in C it just doesn't matter, you can use integers. But uh, I think for a programmer who's reading the code, the intention is more important. Uh, yeah. I think booleans are since C99. I think booleans are specifically from C99. Um, C boolean. Mm. Use booleans in C. What is boolean? Using booleans in C. C69 when? C69. Yeah. We'll work on it only if you use C99. There we go. Um, I think, yeah, yeah C99, you know. but it will also work in C11. Um, okay, and so we also have a separate buffer for native functions, right? And native functions is basically bindings of functions, of C functions, um, that um, you can call from the virtual machine itself. Right. So we are about to introduce yet another buffer here for the static memory. So uh, what we're going to store there, I want to actually store bytes, right? So we're going to store bytes and how I'm going to call this buffer static memory or just memory. I like memory better uh, because um, it's shorter. But unfortunately, in the translation definition, um, in the translation definition, um, I also have a memory, but this is a memory for uh, like temporary usage for like linear allocation and stuff. And I'm just a little bit afraid that we're going to confuse this kind of stuff. So uh, I think at some point we'll have to rename this kind of stuff. Um, right. So I'm going to allocate memory and we're going to have BM uh, memory capacity. Right. So this is the maximum memory. Um, and we can just make that memory always available to you, right? So maybe there will be no size or anything like that. So we don't really need any size here, right? So just let, let's allow you to use the whole memory. And it's going to be filled with zeros and stuff like that. Hello, Matthews P. Hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have a lot of people from Brazil here, actually. Believe it or not. So how many, how much memory are we going to allocate for, for this thing? 640 kilobytes should be enough for everyone, I think. So let's allocate it, <laughs> at least for now, you know, at least for now. So that, later, of course, all of these buffers are, are going to be extendable. They're going to be dynamic. It's just I don't really care about the, their dynamicness while I'm just designing things because we're not really sure what features are going to go in uh, to the final release or anything. So here's the memory, right? And there you go. So we just introduced a static memory into the virtual machine, just like that. Uh, just like that. <sighs> just like that. But the problem here is shut. We can't fucking access that memory. We don't have a single instruction that would enable us with uh, reading from that memory or from uh, with writing to that memory. So what do we do? We need to implement those instructions. So um, what we're going to do here? Uh, this is so fun. You think it's fun? You think it's a fucking joke? You think it's a fucking game? Yes, it is fun, actually. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, essentially, we're going to have a, an instruction that um, reads a single byte right reads a single bytes from a particular address and pushes it on the stack so what's interesting is that we need also an instruction to read two bytes and push it on the stack or maybe four bytes or maybe even eight bytes you see what i mean you see what i mean 
Maybe we, we, we're not gonna call them read. I think I'm not gonna call them read. I think I, can, I wanna call them load. But maybe load is too... Yeah, let's actually call, call it read and write, because in, in WebAssembly they're called load and store, like load, load and store. In our case, it's gonna be read and write, so we don't violate any copyrights or anything like that. So yeah, essentially it expects the address in the uh, memory buffer on the stack, it consumes that address, and then replaces it with a value read from the memory according to the size that you have here. Um, yeah. And they don't accept any operands. You, you can argue that this is essentially an operand, uh, but allowing this thing to have an operand have a consequences because like you can only um, have one, two, four, or eight. So we'll have to check the, whether the operand is correct or not and stuff like that so i don't really want to do that so all right so and another set of instructions that we'll need here is write right so which does effectively the same thing uh but it accepts two um parameters on the stack it accepts the address where we're gonna write something and a value that we're going to write. So what's interesting is that uh, on the stack, you can only have 64-bit numbers. How can you write 8-bit one? Well, effectively, when you write an 8-bit, an we're going to uh, basically truncate the whole value on the stack, like, and we're going to take the uh, least significant byte from that value and just store it there. So this is how it effectively is going to work. Um, yeah, and it's, I think it's a pretty good design. Uh, well, I mean, it's reasonable. Uh, and yeah, so once we implement these eight instructions, uh, we will have an access to the memory. And you know what's interesting? Once we have an access to the memory, effectively we will be able to implement um, a game of life. Because then what we can do, we can essentially use the memory as the canvas uh, and just draw uh, the state of the game of life into the memory and we can write a wrapper program that displays it uh, on each iteration. Uh, we, we can even implement a, a single native function that basically tells the environment, please draw that image on the screen. So as, as a synchronization uh, mechanism, right? So it will tell you, okay, I'm done rendering this frame, draw that frame, uh, draw that frame. Halt, you think it's gonna be halt? I don't know. Uh, I don't really want to hold the virtual machine on each frame. It kind of sounds strange, but we we can use that. It's not a uh, I don't know. Oh, what's interesting is that native functions in this particular case they act like interrupts. What if we call native functions interrupts? <laughs> oh shit, that's such a cool idea. Yeah. Huh. It's it's even better. Like it's yeah. It's kind of interesting. Um. Because they are interrupting the execution of the virtual machine. Um. Semantically, um. Yeah, you, you interrupt execution of the virtual machine, and then uh, you go back into the execution. So you live in the environment of the virtual machine. Um, that's, but we're not going to do that right now. It's just naming stuff, so whatever. Um, alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. And let's, uh, try to build this entire stuff and see in how many places it fails. Interject. Very funny. Ha ha ha. Um, alright. So we need to introduce these things and, um, let me see. So this one is the name, right? So we need to introduce the names for these things. It's gonna be query replace and uh, a boom. Uh, seven. For some reason, I so I'm so sleepy today. I have no idea why. Um, even though I slept really well, it's just maybe something with the weather yet again. Um, yeah, maybe because it's becoming like a warmer because it's been like minus 40 for a long time and now we're getting like a decent weather yet again hopefully i don't know so uh a line rejects return there we go so here we go we have this instruction we have a lot of instructions actually look at that 
that's a decent amount of instructions. Uh, 30, 36, still less than x86 though, but yeah. Um, and this is not a full set. Uh, we still don't have a full set of comparison operations. We don't have like logical, um, logical instructions and so on and so forth. We're gonna have a lot of shit here, that's for sure. Uh, and uh, one thing that is important um, for this kind of stuff is to have a decent reference guide so where you can just look up the name of the instruction and just instantly see the summary of what it does what it accepts and stuff like that let's not repeat the mistake of WebAssembly where this kind of like reference guide is almost impossible to find for some fucking reason and if you find it it contains some sort of like CS grad mambo jumper that is absolutely unreadable um so yeah um you should make a site similar to this one okay what is this site is this MongoTOS? no it's not MongoTOS. maybe i'm gonna do something similar to that <laughs> why not <laughs> we don't even have like established value for the um for the bytecode to be fair so what we're doing we're just taking the memory and we're just dumping it into the file system and calling it bytecode so we don't even have anything standardized. But once we have that, we can create something. Refresh the page, chat. Refresh the page. I really apologize for, for all of that. We're back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I really apologize for what, what happened. Um, something with my internet yet again. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Um, I think it's a little bit hard, hard in here. I hope the wood is not going to be split. Because if it's going to be split, it's going to be such a huge pain in the ass to, like um connect all that together um no it's actually my fault because it's something with the internet uh, with my internet so i want to actually change my clothing because it's a little bit hard in here i'm going to switch to a t-shirt real quick just a second chat uh. All right, uh, so we're back, two back. Um, yeah, so one thing I wanted to say is majority of the uh, instructions don't accept. Uh, Ragu, thank you. Thank you so much for five months. Welcome to 2021 thank you. Thank you so much for five months of uh, Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic virtual machine club. Isn't that amazing? I think it's get damn amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So um, here's the thing I was talking about. Uh, majority of the instructions do not accept any operands. So if we make uh, the variable length of the instruction, right, we can actually save up on a lot of money. Um, memory. <laughs> and also money because uh, we don't have to we don't have to buy memory but memory is cheap these days so maybe we're not gonna save up on that much money memory is money yes it's a it's a 2021 currency um cheers 
Yes, somebody subscribed, and the only thing I can think of is money, so that's why I said that. <laughs> yes. Um, Alright, so... Yeah, but we're not gonna uh, worry about it right now. Uh, so... Okay, so now we need to implement the behavior for these uh, operations, right? Um, Piste. I don't know if I pronounce you... Uh, P.O.G. Thank you so much for two months of Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to our epic money club. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Um, I think I'm getting sick. Um, probably because of the cold weather recently. Um, so I hope it's not going to be Corona or anything like that. Again, at least. Because I was sick with something that was kind of a Corona, but I didn't do any tests, so I don't know if it was actually Corona. So, But it, it felt like it. So all the symptoms were... Uh, all the symptoms matched. Um, all right, so since we are implementing um, four similar instructions, four similar instructions, how are we going to even approach all of that? It's a good question. So this entire thing, um, they released UK and South Africa DLS for Corona, a DLC, I mean. Okay, I see. So the virus finally mutated, right? So the, the virus finally mutated and uh, so the, the current immune system is not really protected from 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 it right mm, i still have corona symptoms from uh three weeks ago yeah so it's actually kind of bad <laughs> uh, the recovery process is very very slow and painful but <sighs> all right so what we need to do here we need to check if you have something on the stack so you need at least one argument on the stack bm stack size uh, if it's less than one, well, I'm sorry, you don't have enough stuff on the stack. We can return error, uh, stack, stack, underflow. There we go. So after that, uh, we need to take a value on top of the stack, right? We need to take the value on top of the stack and use that value as an address, right? Here's an interesting thing. So we already have a, a instruction address. We need to introduce something called a memory address. Uh, memory address, and here it is. So memory address, and um, so it's going to be BM uh, stack, um, right? BM. Uh, oh my God, Emacs stack size uh, minus one and we're gonna uh, do as u64 because i expect memory address to be uh, u64 and there's one thing uh, another thing that we definitely need to check we need to check if uh, address is less uh, than bm memory uh, memory capacity uh, if it is not right if it's greater or equal than this capacity uh, we have to fail with uh, another error here, uh, with an error, error. Uh, and what's going to be the error? The error is going to be something BM memory um, memory access violation. So finally, we have an analog of a uh, sec fault. Yes, this is literally a sec fault. Well, I mean, we don't have a segment, but uh, this is a, you know, memory memory boundaries violation or something like that. Uh, so, uh, error, uh, memory, memory. Let's call it illegal memory access, right? Something like that. I think that's what it's going to be called. And I didn't really want it to stop the... Um, the multiple curses so early two three four here it is and we have illegal memory uh, access uh, sec fault we have that um, and the next thing we need to do we need to do bm memory uh, address right so we take a thing at this particular address right uh, and here is an interesting thing. We need to take a pointer of this stuff. 
Oh shit, this is actually very interesting. Okay. Mm, hello, Cozy White Bear. Welcome to the stream. Hello, hello. We take a pointer of this entire thing, right? So it's gonna be a pointer to U8. It's gonna be a pointer to U8. We're gonna convert it to the pointer to the corresponding value that we're reading. In case of the uh, read um, 8, it's gonna be U8, uh, 18, and then 16, and so on and so forth. Uh, let's actually not jump uh, further. So I'm gonna stop the multiple cursors here because this is where we're starting to get uh, like differences. So in this particular case, it doesn't really matter because it's a read eight. And the only thing we need to do here, I think, is to do something like uh, stack bm stack uh, size minus one uh, as u64, and we're just assigning this value here. Um, right, so of course it's gonna be like truncated and stuff like that, but that should be all right. All right, so here when you're reading uh 16 bit, it's a little bit more complicated. U int 16t, uh, it's not 16, it's 64, 16. 16, I said, <laughs> cut, right? We do something like that, then we dereference this entire thing and only then we save it to here okay um who can spot the problem with this approach who can spot the problem with this approach do we have any uh binary exploitation hackers in here overflow well, yeah, it's kind of close. Basically, this is not enough to check uh, all of the possible illegal memory accesses. So basically, if you put a pointer at the boundary and you try to read two bytes from it, it will try to oh, like read more bytes further. <laughs> yeah, if uh, address is at least, well, yeah, at last one byte. Yeah, so we, we have to be super careful with all of that. We have to be super careful with all of that. So uh, how can we do all of this? Um, I think we can um, address uh, that one and plus that one. I guess this is what we're going to have here. Ajiyang, oh my god, welcome to the streamers. Uh, we are implementing static memory for a virtual machine. So soon we're gonna have like a static memory buffer from which you can read and write. And we have instructions, read eight, read 16, read 32, read 64, and so on and so forth. Uh, so yeah, we have to be a little bit careful. So this is what uh, we have here. And yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the next one is gonna be what? Um, this one is gonna be actually current one plus one plus two plus three so it has to be something like plus three this time then All right so and we're going to be casting this entire stuff to u int 32 u int 32 like this and then we're going to be saving all of that to the memory uh to the stack because we're reading all of that right of course we're reading all of that so this is going to be the stack all right and uh, the similar thing goes here but here we're gonna do plus seven right plus seven so the current address and uh, seven other bytes so and then here we take the pointer we cast it to you 64 uh, T like this 64 T and we are saving all of that uh, right there right there there we go. So we implemented all of the uh, read instructions. Isn't that amazing? I think it's kind of cool. Uh, okay, so I want to stub uh, all of these things. Uh, assert false. Um, let's grab these instruction names. Uh, write is not implemented. Is not implemented. There we go. Cool. So let's try to compile all that and see if it compiles. And it doesn't compile, of course, because we don't have such thing as memory address. Okay, so this is analog to instruction address. 
right and it's just a type def to you um you in 64 so similarly we're gonna have you in 64 uh memory address so i'm, I'm basically like uh, adding um, uh, semantic information to the names of the types uh, all right so what's another thing error illegal memory access okay so let's actually add it to the errors to the error list uh so illegal memory inst illegal instruction illegal instruction access illegal operand illegal memory access and so on and so forth okay mm -hmm. uh, what else do we have here and of course we need to be able to uh, print this kind of stuff this is going to be case error um illegal illegal memory access and we're going to return exactly that the illegal memory access it's pretty cool it's pretty cool all right so stack is undeclared okay did i did i actually copy pasted that mistake everywhere holy shit i'm so dumb okay <laughs> ah, i'm sorry if it was too loud uh, i'm just a little bit frustrated with me being dumb uh so it has to be like this i, just, I literally copy pasted that mistake like everywhere uh, now i have to suffer uh redefinition of address okay we have a scope leak i completely forgot that these case branches they don't introduce their own scope ah classic c and c plus plus of course yes the, the scope leak Can't that still overflow if address equal u int equal max, then add would be zero? Probably. That's actually, but that means it will point at zero, right? So, and zero, zero is a valid address. So, yeah, sure. So, um, all right. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you mean, and then we're using it. Okay, I see, I see what you mean. Uh... All right, so uh, that's a good point. I, I didn't realize what you mean. So we can actually uh, do minus one here instead. Sure, that's a good point. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm a little bit sleepy right now. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, okay. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, so we don't need to do this thing here and uh, let's do minus one instead. I think it, it would be a little bit better. Mm. Yeah, zero would be valid, but not the address. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then after, after like a second, I realized what it means. Uh, okay. So I'm just sorry, I just need more cup of tea, uh, cups of tea to, to wake up, I suppose. Even though I woke up like, um, I would say six hours ago, I'm still, every time I start streaming, I'm extremely sleepy. Uh, I hope BM memory is, uh, if not, you have UB. Uh, well, it is. Uh, let me see. BM. Yeah, there we go. So it's u int eight. Is it good? Mm, imagine waking up in twenty twenty. Yeah. Is it UB? Mm, I hope it's not UB. <sighs> All right. So basically, the compiler has a special behavior for like uh, pointers to one byte and casting the pointers. Uh, if it's uh, char, it's fine. I think u int eight is char. Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Uh, all right, so this is the compile. It seems to be compiling. It seems to be compiling. So we have a read operation to best. I, I compile my stuff with an F no strict aliasing, so I never ran into this. Okay, so let's actually uh, enable that thing as well. So basically it enables, um, or what does it do exactly? Uh, F no strict aliasing is that a warning or is that a disabling optimization no what's this flag means i know what is a strict aliasing i'm not sure what this flag does 
Does it warn you if you're trying to do some fucky wacky with strict aliasing or it, I think it just disables it. It's by analog, an analogy with no exceptions and stuff. It disables strict aliasing, which is sort of optimization. Okay, I see. Uh, all right, let's disable it as well. I think it's a good idea. Thank you. Uh, F no strict uh, aliasing. Yeah. Cool. That's pretty cool. Um, so we already have instructions that can read uh write and stuff like that but we don't have any instructions uh, that would enable us with writing um right and uh without these operations we cannot test much right uh, we cannot test much so let's actually first implement all of the instructions and then we can try to write a simple program that uses those instructions before we jump into that i need to make another cup of tea a single cup of tea is not enough for me so does anyone have any uh, questions while I'm making a cup of tea. Mm. Why is Go so boring? Um, isn't that like a design choice of the Go? You know, the classic thing about languages. It is intentionally designed to be uh, to be boring so you can be productive. Ah, you know, the same shit the, the Kotlin marketing team says and, you know. Mm. Will you have an indirect memory access separation? What do you mean? Indirect memory access separation. I don't understand what that means. By, by a pointer? Uh, um... I'm writing a small program to generate man pages from normal text format and I'm already bored. Well, it is what it is. Are you using Go for that? Um, where are my pointers? Where is malloc? Where are sec faults? I mean, in Go you can have malloc pointers and sec faults, I think. Um, well, I mean, it's not just not called malloc, I think, but you definitely can have a sec fold in Go. Um, access address by, uh, address, by an address by a memory. Sure. So, um, so imagine that you, you store a pointer in the memory, in the memory itself. So you load it into the stack and you use the result of that load as a read to another location. So it's already supported once we have all of that. So yeah these instructions they accept the operands uh from the stack and they push the results of their work onto the stack so that means you can use the result of read for uh, the next write so that in, in uh, implements the, the thing that you just said i mean it's just naturally we don't have to explicitly code it um it is hard but it's so annoying in small things oh you guys talking about go yeah so didn't you ask, get your sisk nonsense out of the risk <laughs> um, How do you learn to implement this low level programming you're doing right now? By doing it right now. I'm literally learning it right now. You're, uh, you're asking an incorrect question. You're assuming that I sort of take time, read some secret book that I will never share with you, right? Uh, like, make sure that I understand everything and then I'm doing it. No, I'm literally learning it right now. I started without even knowing how to do any of this shit. And now I know a little bit, but still, a, you know, a huge way to go. I know you want me to tell you what is that secret book that I read so you can read it too and know how to... No, there is no secret book. You literally suffer cry every night and uh, implement the shit this is how we do that seriously you have to suffer and cry every night and that's how we learn these things sorry there's no easier way to do that it's just, it's just truth um it is what it is and it isn't what it isn't all right so i'm gonna go to the kitchen um and turn on the kettle don't go anywhere um or i will cry <laughs> <laughs> Please don't go. <laughs>
Hello. Donc, bah. Tu bats. Uh, Alrighty. So, we're just waiting for some hot water. Uh, so what do we what we need to do here is uh, of course we need to check uh, this text. So we're implementing write instructions. So write instruction and like a read instruction is uh, accepting two parameters. So it's it's accepting the uh, address and it's accepting the value. That's what it's doing. All right, so that means it needs two parameters. If the stack size is less than two, well, I'm sorry, uvu, you did a fucky wacky stack underflow. B, sorry. Um, okay, and uh, the first parameter I think is going to be the address, right? So the first one is going to be the address, uh, memory address, uh, memory address, and it's going to be located on the. Uh, element below the top one there we go and we're gonna check the usual thing here if address is less th uh, is greater or equal than bm memory capacity well you've got yourself uh, illegal memory access there we go you've got yourself illegal memory access uh, after that uh, what we need to do here is um, take the value I suppose and the value is gonna be well, this has to be two, actually. This this has to be two. Okay, so we do bm uh, memory uh, memory address, and what we're saving there, we're saving uh, bm stack bm stack size minus one as u sixty four. Is there any easy way to truncate that stuff? <laughs> um, what's the easiest way to truncate that? So um, maybe I'm going to wait until the compiler tells me something. Maybe I'm going to wait until the compiler tells me something. Uh, and after that, we need to decrease the stack uh, by two, right? Because, um, because we consumed both of the arguments. Uh, he doesn't drink bean water. What the hell is bean water? Is that the, the thing that the liquid with the thing in, in a can? Oh, holy shit, that's disgusting. All right. Um, okay, it does compile. But will it actually truncate that? Ah, okay. All right. I imagine like... The canned beans, you know, the canned beans and also like the, the liquid with it and... <laughs> oh, holy shit, I, I see what you mean, you mean coffee, bean, bean, okay, very funny. <laughs> um... Magic bean juice make you go fast. I mean, I don't speak English. I, I'm, I'm realizing that I kind of vaguely remember that in English there is this idiom that people uh, call coffee bean juice. Yeah, I just I, I don't speak English. I'm sorry. Um, all right. So what will happen if you assign U64 to U8? And why my compiler doesn't fucking complain about that, mate? Why my compiler doesn't complain about that? Uh, all right, so let's actually do a little bit of an experiment and uh, just see what's gonna happen. STD AU, uh, lib, and also int, right? So we're also uh, gonna have int. Um, so, and imagine that I have something u64t x, and I'm gonna make it equal to um, one. Two, 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 two. So this is that, and I'm gonna duplicate that. So there you go. This looks like a pretty cool, um, a pretty cool 64-bit number. And then if I try to uh, assign it to something like this, right? I'm gonna assign it to something like this, and then I'm gonna try to print it. Conversion will tell me. Okay, that's that's cool. Thank you, thank you so much. I just want to see what's gonna happen if I try to. Uh, you know, print uh, such number. I think it's going to be actually 
Um, yeah. uh, I don't think it's going to be equal to CC. That's what I feel like. But this is just my feelings. Uh, compilers don't care about my feelings, alright? Oh shit, they do care about my feelings, nice. Alright, so it actually just truncates, it just truncates the value, but is this a defined behavior? Is this a defined behavior? So I'm gonna go back, back to the kitchen and uh, pour myself some leaf juice, whatever the fuck you kids call it these days. Oh shit, I actually bring the wrong vessel. I think it's like accessing AX part of rep, probably, but is, is this a defined behavior? I don't, I don't know. We're about to find out. doesn't smell like anything because I'm drinking regular tea unfortunately should have brought Earl Grey all right so what if we try to compile it with a W conversion um, conversion okay conversion from uint uh, may change the value Okay, so but what if I do that explicitly, right? What if I say explicitly, please, Mr. Compiler, convert. Will it shut the fuck up? It does in fact shut the fuck up. So hopefully this is a defined behavior, right? Hopefully this is a defined behavior. Mm -hmm. In other words, unsigned integers implement modular arithmetic. Uh, that makes sense. And, uh, okay. When an expression is used in a context where a value of a different type is expected, conversion may occur. <laughs> the warning is so funny here. Uh, it's like sudden event that nobody expects may occur. So it is not guarantee, it's just may occur all of a sudden. Um, okay. Uh, conversion takes place in the following situation. In the assignments, uh, scalar initialization, okay. Default argument promotion, usual arithmetic conversions. Oh shit, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Implicit conversions. But I'm gonna assume that it's just truncating things and essentially modular arithmetic, okay. So that's pretty much exactly what we need anyway. Um, so, and I want to enable the uh, conversion stuff in the um, in here. Missing prototypes, uh, conversion. Contem mm. cartoon theorem strikes again. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh shit! I'm sorry. Uh, all right. So it uh, already immediately immediately complains about this kind of stuff. Okay, so there's there are other places where we have to make the changes. Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. And now, um, sort of what? Uh, Kajisan is referring to a well-known meme about. Oh shit! I'm sorry. Sorry for what? Our daddy told us not to be ashamed of our code especially if it compiles and all you know because if it compiles it works i will go it much in that. <laughs> it's amazing i mean come on it's absolutely amazing in my opinion the dialogues in the gay porn is just a piece of art holy shit the acting the acting is amazing anyway so um yeah So now we need to do what? Uh, we need to do what? We need to uh, do this thing. 
Mm. Oh, it's, it's interesting how I actually did this, but didn't do that. Hmm. Uh, and in here, uh, we have also a similar situation. So do I need to... Huh. Basm a lock. So in here, we know that M is actually positive. Evan, have watched iPhone ad for sodding. Thank you for watching an iPhone ad. Uh, if I understand correctly, I may even get some money from you watching that ad, but I'm not 100% sure if I will. Um, so, yeah. But thank you for watching. Maybe. Oh my god. Jiang gifted tier 1 sub to Ivan Ho. Thank you. Thank you so much for so many gifted subs, actually. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, yeah, Ivan Ho. Welcome to our Adless Club. That's right. I also don't watch ads. It's kind of interesting. Like, I have an ad block. Please don't tell Twitch. Uh, but if I didn't have it, if I went to my um, to my channel, would I see an ad? Oh no, I probably won't see the, the ad because I'm implicitly uh, lifetime subscribed to myself. And since I'm a subscriber to myself, like I probably don't see any ads. So it, it, it kind of makes sense, I think. All right, so it's actually kind of cool that I enabled the conversion because it made me to check all of these things uh right uh specifically like this kind of stuff thank you jiang for reminding me about, about the w conversion uh yeah it's, it's kind of cool uh all righty so what what else do we have here Signed, uh, signed, signed is also implementation defined, not UB. What is UB? Undefined behavior. It's abbreviation. It's kind of funny that... Uh, you probably <laughs> Chi Young, why are you so salty today? Come on. Uh, uh, it's, it's kind of funny how this abbreviation is really just, like little known outside of CC++ community. Right, so only C, C++ community uses that, uh, you know, abbreviation all the time uh, and no one else. I think Rust, well, Rust community also ki kind of uses that abbreviation, but actually like less, like more rare than C, C++. So um, interesting. And, and when people come from other languages, they see this like, combination of characters and they think, what the fuck is that? Uh, ugly bullshit. Yeah, it's it's another way to translate that, I suppose. <laughs> um, yeah, I wonder why it's, it's so popular. It's, we get fucked by it every time. All right. So um, here's what's going on, and I guess I'm gonna just continue doing this thing. So now we need to write 16 uh, bits. 16 bits so this is the size this is an address but now we expect two bytes and uh what we'll have to do here is very interesting look we'll have to take a pointer then cast that to 16 right a pointer and dereference it dereference it and assign it again and i'm gonna actually remove this cast because i want to make sure that the compiler will complain about what i'm doing uh, yeah, there we go, redefinition. So, uh, and I did a fucky wacky. I supposed to actually put that here, right? And of course, I also did a little bit of oopsie doopsie. Ooh, ooh. Uh, yeah, yeah, so let's actually wrap all of that stuff in parentheses. Parentheses, parentheses, there we go. Mm. Very specification match standard. Hello from 2015. All right, so um, let's continue. Uh, 2015, the much simpler times, I'm gonna tell you. 2015 was good, yes. Um, I still have warm feelings toward it. Okay, 32. Uh, does it complain? Why are you not complaining? 
Ah. So expected expression. Oh, 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 oh. I, I think uh, I have to put uh, put additional parentheses here. Is that what I have to do? Ah, I'm a dummy. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, 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 there we go. So I don't need any parentheses here. Uh, and uh, now I can just cast all of that here. I can just cast all of that here. Cool. And similarly, uh, I can do something like that. Um, all right. So looks. Oh shit. Thirty-two. Let's see. Mm. Nice. Cool. We have right operation. Uh, we have right operation. Uh, now uh, we need to do the same, but for sixty-nine. Do the same, but for sixty-nine. Uh, and it's gonna be minus seven uh, and we don't even need to well we do need to do uh, to do this conversion right but we don't need to do it like this so we can just straight up assign it like, like so um, C has a defined ABI no I think neither C nor C++ in their standards have a defined ABI. I think there is some attempts uh, to standardize ABI outside of C, C++ standards, at least I heard that. Um, so, but the ABI is definitely not part of the standard. But you may follow some other specifications and call them the standard. So, I don't know. ABI is platform specific. Yeah, I guess that's the way to put it. Um, I was about to ask whether uh, Rust's ABI is standardized, but then I realized that in Rust nothing is standardized. <laughs> uh, so I decided not to ask that. <clears throat> uh, Alright, so everything seems to be compiling. Uh, and yeah, so we have implemented the full set of read and write operations, and they should be accessible um, through the um, through the assembly. So what we can do here, it's actually a pretty good question. We can try to, you know, iterate uh, n times and fill up the memory with like one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. I know CPP is undefined, but since <clears throat> everyone in their dog God damn it, uses CABI for FFI. I had an impression that it is standardized. <clears throat> yeah, because the standardization for ABI is needed. So that's why, as, as I mentioned, it's sort of standardized, but outside of C, C++ standard. Right. So we have like uh, System 5 ABI, as uh, Soding 2 os mentioned, right? So, and you can say that maybe it's a standard. It's just a standard that is separate from C, C++ standard. It's just specification outside of it, right? So standardization for this kind of thing are still in demand. And whether it is defined in C, C++ standard, it's just irrelevant. Like we can define it outside of it, right? And have competing standards, like in XKCD comics or whatever. <laughs> Uh, um, in Rust, it is even necessary to have a, everything statically linked, really? Okay. Uh, why the fuck my Rust program refers to all of this shit then if it's statically linked? Is it really statically linked? I'm, I'm not sure if it's statically linked. So <laughs> here's my program written in Rust and nothing fucking here is statically linked. So, <laughs> I don't know. I even depend on libc. But I mean, I actually have like some weird third party dependencies that may require that. <clears throat> so I'm just using the C wrapper, so maybe that's why it's statically linked. But if I used only Rust dependency, maybe it wouldn't be a thing. I don't know. Go is static link. Your mom is statically link. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay. That's why she's so big. Uh, <clears throat> I should I should start. <laughs> um, so I think we're ready to <laughs> to to test all of this shit. So, so what kind of program we should uh, write to test read write? <laughs> 
um, so examples um, uh, memory bosom there we go. include examples natives uh, native bosom uh, and what we're gonna do here we're gonna oh I was actually thinking to rename the label directive to bind directive um, but I wasn't 100% sure about that so maybe at some point I'm gonna do that um, so let me find yeah so I'm gonna put it to do rename the notion of a label to binding right uh, so it will cause the renaming naming of label directive to bind uh, which in my opinion makes more sense add sense all right so rename the notion okay so this is one to do um to do bosom memory is not the same thing as bm memory uh, we may want to do some renaming to avoid the confusion confusion in the future all right so um, does rest still uh, use internal hashes when generating mangled names um, huh internal hashes huh and do, how often do they change the hash function? <laughs> One of the roadblocks for dynamic linking. If the hash function is not stabilized, this is actually really <laughs> every night. Okay, I see. Sorry, very interesting. Uh, what does B stands in bosom? It stands for B. Um, I just came here. Welcome, welcome to the stream. All right, so we're gonna have a label and uh, we're gonna have like a 30 iterations, right? So uh, yeah, then we're gonna have a halt. B is B, yes. I mean, it's, it literally stands for B. It's a B assembler. Um, all right. Uh, so what we need to do here, we need to push a pointer. Well, the entire conversation is pointless because Rust has no specification. <laughs> this was this. Will it ever have a specification? Well, I think it may uh, acquire a specification if enough companies will depend on Rust, right? Because whatever we call POSIX was not really standardized at first until people started to depend on Unix. So to to be able to properly depend on it, like there was some sort of standardization needed. So they just took whatever they had at the time and called it a standard. And I'm pretty sure this is what's going to happen with Rust. At some point, people will say, okay, whatever we have right now, this is the standard, this is specification. So there you go. And of course, there will be a lot of crap that nobody bothered to clean up in that specification. Uh, because, yeah. <laughs> Well, at some point it will get into uh, so yeah so if it will get enough traction and it's getting a lot of traction right now by the way rust is actually increasing in popularity like really really fast so it's definitely going to have specification at some point uh all right so push um so what we're pushing here we're pushing the zero right so this is going to be i right this is going to be i uh, and we're also going to use i as the address, address. So essentially what we're going to do, we're going to take uh, i and uh, so to do a write. So the first value in the, um, in the write operation is, uh, is an address so this is going to be an address and uh, another one is going to be uh, a value that you want to write right so the, here we have an address and here we have a value that you that we want to write into the memory and then we're doing something like write 8 right which writes uh, a value i at the address i as a single byte right 
Uh, after that, I want to push one and uh, increment this entire thing. So by doing that, uh, it's going to be one and then uh, plus one. There we go. And uh, I'm going to duplicate this entire thing. Right, I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to push... Uh, I think I'm going to push N. Right, I'm going to push N and check whether it's equal to N, which will result in uh, having a true or false here, right? Some sort of a boolean uh, condition, let's call it condition. And then we're going to do jump if loop, which will consume that condition. And we're going to end at I plus one at some point. So, and uh, loop actually starts somewhere here. There we go. So here's the program that iterates from 0 to 30, from 0 to 30, and uh, fills up the memory, like 0, 1, 2, 3, blah, 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 blah. That's how it does that. Uh, makes sense? So it just uh, we're just testing write 8. So that's what we're doing, essentially. We're just testing write 8. Uh, but there's no way to dump that memory or to inspect that memory. So yeah, it's going to be fun. It's gonna be full. Mm, we can try to when we uh, exit the loop, we can try to invoke some sort of a native function, um, something like push zero and um, let's say and then push n. So what will that mean? Is uh, print a string, right? Print a string starting from uh, from here. N times hmm this is actually very interesting so we could actually start at character zero but our assembly doesn't support character zero so we'll have to do it like that uh, but maybe not all right anyway so let's just go ahead and try to compile everything let's just try to compile everything and see if it compiles and it is in fact compiles it does in fact compiles uh, and uh, here's the memory so we, we compile this thing so if I try to do debuzzum, examples, um, um, examples memory is going to be vm. And there we go. Here is the program that we just implemented. And it does have write 8 instruction. And it looks like the program that we implemented. OK, that's pretty cool. That is, in fact, a pretty cool. So maybe we need to expand. Uh, our emulator, specifically the debug mode of the emulator. Of the emulator. How are we going to do that, chat? So I'm going to go to the BME, and as you can see, on each step, what we're doing, we're dumping the stack, right? We're dumping the stack, uh, but we also need to dump the memory, right? We also need to dump the memory. Um, so dump the stack, uh, dump BM dump memory but memory is actually kind of huge not gonna lie uh so we'll probably have to you know dump like a small chunk of it of somehow uh bm dump memory there we go bm dump memory it's gonna be that um mm, file stream and uh we have a pointer bm <clears throat> so, and how are we going to do that? I'm going to just iterate through the whole memory, uh, through the whole memory. Uh, BM, memory capacity, memory capacity, something like this. And uh, what we're going to do here is going to be something like X, um, BM memory, BM memory I. And we need anything else. Do we need anything else? I think it's going to be OK. And it's going to be a, like a new line. Um, it would be nice to like split every now and then, but I can just go. Uh -huh. And reduce the uh, size of the memory capacity. So this, this is basically what I can do. Since we're going to have only 30 bytes, uh, we might as well actually do something like 20. And in the memory example, we can have uh, only 10. So we're going to like uh, fill up uh, up until 10. So and let's try to rebuild everything. And there are some problems. Oh, yeah, this is because I'm supposed to print to a particular stream. Sure. 
Uh, still have some problems here. BM, no previous. Okay, let's actually declare it as a static. Uh, cool. So now, in the debug mode, we're gonna be uh, also printing the memory. Right, we're gonna be also printing the memory. And while we're printing the memory, I think it's good to indicate that we're printing the memory. Uh, do something like uh, fprint stream uh, memory like that and let's try to recompile that one more time all right shut shut are you ready uh, I can just try to run it to ensure that everything's okay stack underflow yes fucking stack underflow isn't that amazing love it absolutely love it okay so let's actually go into the debug mode. So here we have a fucking stack. We have a fucking stack and the memory and the memory is filled with zeros and memory looks absolutely disgusting because it's not padded with zeros. I hate it, I fucking hate it. So what I wanna do here, I wanna do something like this. So it's, it's padded properly. Okay, one more time. Now we're fucking talking, mate. Now we're fucking talking. So I'm pushing zero onto the stack. So as you can see, we have a zero. Then I'm duplicating that zero, then I'm duplicating it again. Cool. And then I'm writing zero at zero. So that should consume uh, like these top two elements. It did in fact consume them. Okay. And I think I found a flow. Yes. Our instruction does not advance IP. I'm such a dummy. I'm such a dummy. Holy shit. Alrighty. So how are we going to advance the IP? uh bm execute instruction so i i would presume none of the reads nor writes actually advance uh, advance the ip <sighs> yes starting to us yes ha 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 uh all right so it's gonna be one two three one two three and then i'm gonna do something like this a boom a boom uh, and then boom bm ip plus one how about that isn't that amazing and now i added that to all of them who needs um okay so there's actually more of these things where i need to do that bm who needs uh like abstractions if you can just copy paste code several times i mean come on who needs that shit uh, all right, so let's go. Push zero, dupe zero, dupe zero. Write zero at zero. Cool. Now push one, plus i, dupe zero, push ten. Why, why did, was it? Oh, okay. Oh, we, we did the comparison. Okay, I see. Halt zero. Okay, so I did a fucky wacky somewhere in the program. Uh, not equal, cool. <laughs> of course. I yeah, fucking I, I do that every time. No matter what language is, even my own language, I keep like messing up the logic stuff as usual. Okay, so we are writing zero, then we're duping, checking, equal, not, jump if, jumping back. Okay, duping, duping. So now look at the memory. So we're supposed to write one here. And we did it. It actually wrote one at address one. Isn't that fucking amazing? Holy shit. And we can continue. And it can it continue writing into the memory. It fills up the memory uh, from left to right in incremental order. There you go. This is absolutely fucking amazing. And it did that uh, up until 10. So it actually filled up 10 uh, values and then it stopped. And then it just stopped. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. So now we can do string operations, by the way, chat. We can literally do string operations. Uh, for example, yeah, we can supply a string in, in the memory Right, and we can implement ROT13 algorithm that will iterate the string and, uh, you know, uh, in, encrypt it and then maybe decrypt it as well. So, yeah, that's actually pretty cool. And we can manipulate that memory and stuff like that. And, yeah.
And then through native functions, we can actually uh, build a bridge uh, between the internal memory of the virtual machine and the memory of the machine. For example, um, you can have a native function that downloads something from the web and puts it into the memory of the virtual machine and the virtual machine will just crank some, some stuff there. Uh, and essentially we re-implemented WebAssembly. <laughs> Uh, so we can finally have an official hello world exam. Yes, yeah, sort of, kind of. And uh, what's cool is that I think we may have, uh, we need to extend the format of byte, uh, byte code files. We definitely need to extend the format of bytecode files because right now they can store instructions. What I wanna be able to also do, I wanna be able to store the initial memory uh, for for the program as well uh, and that way we will be able to store strings in the memory too right imagine an assembly defining something like um, so memory something like uh, string uh, with a particular name for, for example hello world and you do something like this uh, hello world uh, right so and then you can access that string uh, through here. So the name hello will point at a particular address in a static memory. So you can just use that. So you can push hello and that pushes the address and then you can read eight and that reads the first character from your memory. So something like this. How can download Gentoo in virtual box uh, from the internet? Uh, all right. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Does it sound cool? Oh shit, we don't we probably don't even need a special directive here. What if we just use the same directive as label? So essentially if the label if the label label's value is a string, it will automatically add it to the memory. You see what I mean? It will automatically to, add it to the memory, like in C. Like every time you do a, a, like a, in C string literal, it adds it to some sort of a buffer in a static memory, right? So we can do like a kind of similar thing here. Are you a weeb? I need help patching KDE and the FreeBSD. Well, I'm actually a fake weeb. Uh, I don't watch anime, uh, but I pretend to, to like it. So yeah, so I'm a fake weeb. Does it count? I, I think a fake weeb can explain you how to patch KDE and the Linux, right? To, to explain how to do KDE and the FreeBSD, you have to be real weeb. So, um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, so I think that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Um, and we want to have that. Mm, what's your favorite anime then? Uh, Filter Frank is my favorite anime. Um, so the problem is that we don't have a really convenient way of printing the memory. We don't have a really convenient way of printing the memory. We need a, like a GDB-like debugger. You know, the, the thing that Hirohotsun uh, Plus was actually implementing. So maybe uh, we're gonna implement that at some point. So because if I enable this size of the memory, right? Um, <clears throat> It got cancelled in this... Yeah, it's, it is it is what it is. Like, I mean, it's, I think it was the best anime out there. Ping guy was my waifu. Uh, Attack on Titan, we concluded that AUT... Jit. Okay, so this is even more obscure reference. Um, all right. So if I try to do something like this, this is the memory, right? So, yeah. So we have a 640 kilobytes and it's just not convenient to print the whole memory like that, right? Um, so we need a better way of printing memory. Mm, consecutive series of zeros with dots. We, we can do that probably, but that will require implementing like a whole algorithm right now. And it's kind of outside of the scope of what I want to do right now. So, um, but maybe as a, as a future, in the future, we can do that. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do, I'm going to just remove dump memory. Um, and we're gonna put it like this. Uh, BME. Mm. Uh, 
I think we just literally need to implement like a GDB style debugger. Right, G GDB style debugger. Uh, dump memory um, to do implement GDB style, uh, but better, of course. Debugger for uh, BDB. <laughs> well, here, Hudson Plus actually called it BDB. Like, I, I don't remember if you guys saw. Uh, some of the screenshots that he heard some posts actually posted here. He posted some screenshots where he wrapped BM into like GDB like interface and he just stepped through instructions like in GDB. <laughs> it was actually kind of cool. I, I wanted something, I want something like that. So uh, we need an issue for that. Implement GDB style, uh, but better, of course. Uh, debugger for um, for BM, right? So it's gonna be uh, like BME, but uh, it's gonna allow you to step debug. And because of that, maybe we'll be able to get rid of the debug mode in BME itself, because the debugger is gonna be like a separate uh, separate executable. So I think it's a, it's a good idea generally. So this is gonna be the to-do. Uh, so what else I wanted? What else I wanted? I remember that I wanted something specific. Maybe some interesting examples some interesting examples. I, I definitely wanted Red 13 example. Red 13. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna put to do here to do Red 13 example that um, read writes data from to the BM memory. Brain fucking bosom. We do have an issue for that, by the way. BF, yeah, there we go. So we have a lot of uh, issues for different kind of examples. I want to implement shit ton of different examples, different algorithms, like as many as possible to test the usefulness of the machine, right? So if the, the more algorithms we can implement for that virtual machine, the better, because they're the, like the test cases for, for, for the machine. So, and the BrainFuck debugger, I think it's going to be like an ultimate test of Turing completeness of the virtual machine because we know that BF is uh, Turing complete. If we can implement it in uh, BM, that means BM is Turing complete. How are we going to implement strings in BASM, null terminated or as pair of length pointers? Uh, I think it's not going to be decided on the level of the virtual machine. It's like uh, how strings are implemented in x86. Are they sized or null terminated? It doesn't matter. You decide that. So I think it's going to be the same attitude, right? So basically, here you here you have an access to the um, to the bytes. Whether you want it null terminated or not, it's just up to you. Does it make sense? I think it's kind of similar to NASM. In NASM, a string is null terminated, but you can make it null terminated and by adding zero there. So yeah, or maybe that's what uh, what what you meant. I think that's what you meant. I'm sorry. I, I think I missed in the studio. Yeah. So the the literals are not going to null terminate automatically, if that's what you meant. Okay. So I think I missed in the studio. Um, but what about the BISP? A BISP uh, will impose its own requirements on BASM. Uh, so which we don't know yet. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. So uh, let me take a look at some of the to dos uh, that we introduced. Rename the notion of label to bindings. Bus memory is not the same thing as BM memory. Implement GDB style. Red right example. Do I want to do this renaming right now? Do I want to rename labels to bindings right now? It feels like I'm completely outside of the scope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I might as well actually do something like that a little bit later. Uh, okay, I'm gonna remove that, remove that, and in the example, I think it would be nice to uh, actually do something like this. Fill, fill up the memory with numbers, uh, numbers from 0 to n. Uh, yeah, so basically an explanation of what the hell is going on here. We don't even need to include natives because we don't use any native functions here, but Printing something at the end would be nice, I think. Printing something at the end would be nice. Let's implement a function. Uh, uh, dump memory. Somewhere here. So, and what this function is going to do? 
uh, what this function is gonna do. We're gonna push uh, zero, the beginning, then 10, and then we're gonna call native dump memory. So essentially, it dumps 10 bytes starting from here. Mm. There we go. It's pretty cool. Mm, it's pretty cool. So let's actually implement that. Uh, to, 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 to. What are you guys touching in the chat? Ah, okay. Get also no name. Um, all right. <laughs> Stop touching things, chat. Okay. Stop touching. Uh, all right. So let's implement this native function. <clears throat> BMEC. <clears throat> Uh, all right, all right. Static uh, error bm dump memory. Uh, the fuck. Mod, mod. So dump memory. Um, so here, dump memory actually expects. Uh, two arguments, right? So that means BM uh, stack size has to be um, at least two. Otherwise, you have a stack on the floor. So, and what we have here, uh, what we have here, so the first one is this uh, address and then N. So that means we're going to have a memory address. Uh, so here is the address. BM stack uh, dm stack size minus two as u64, right? Uh, u in 64 count is gonna be the other thing. Uh, bbm, not bbm, but this one. All right, so we have that. And of course, uh, what we need to do here afterwards is stack size minus two because we consumed all of the arguments here. And uh, yeah, what we're doing here, we're doing a pretty straightforward thing here. We just do uh, starting from the address. Um, from the address, we might as well actually do it like zero, uh, less than, oh, and you have to be super careful here, otherwise you can, you know, uh, all right, count, all right. Um, if address plus i is greater than equal than bm memory capacity, we instantly return a what? Uh, B, um, it's actually error. Uh, illegal memory access. There we go. We can actually check for such illegal memory access, like outside of the loop, so we don't have to check it all the time. I think it's going to be even better. So it's going to be address plus count, um, right? Plus count uh, minus one. If it's greater than equal uh, than that, <sighs> and it could actually overflow and shit, right? So we have to be super careful. God damn! Thank you. I, I forgot who did that, but somebody like pointed out a pretty cool situation when uh, these things overflows which may cause all of these checks to fail and now i keep thinking about that so i think i think that's good um all right uh add count minus one be a memory capacity um so how can we do that so here's the memory capacity Mm, and if this thing overflows, <laughs> because you can try to subtract the counts, right? But again, if it's too big, it also it underflows. Right, it's it underflows, which probably like is not better. Um, so wow, <laughs> that's really bad. Uh, how do I do that? 
My, my brain cannot cannot process that yet. So. Um, check if A plus B less than B. Probably. Mm. We can do that, but uh, you kind of have to check for overflow and underflow separately. Yeah. Holy shit, security for such machine is going to be pain in the ass. Oh my god, now I understand why it's so hard. Yeah, holy fuck. Um, all right. So, all right, let's actually assume if uh, address plus count all right, address plus count um, is less or less than address, but could it be equal? I don't think it could be equal. Right. If it's less than address, that means there's something wrong. So what do we do in this particular situation, right? What do we do in this particular situation? If uh, address... Mm -hmm. I think I need to make a small break. Let's make a cup of tea, chat. Uh, while I'm making a cup of tea, I'm gonna unstuck and realize what needs to be done. Security has been banned. Actually, this kind of security is very interesting. Uh, yeah. Hmm. You know, the ultimate uh, proof of success is gonna be when somebody is gonna use this virtual machine in CTF. Please, somebody use this virtual machine in CTF, please. <laughs> ah. All right, I'm not, I'm not that popular. That would be actually super cool. I'm pretty sure like there's a lot of vulnerabilities here, like holy fuck, because I don't pay attention to any security right now. <laughs> I believe it can be equal only when count equals zero, uh, which isn't an overflow. So I, I need to understand what needs to be done here specifically. Mm -hmm. Imagine how simple that check is in assembly. How sim I'm not sure what you're trying to say. Oh, you mean checking the on? Okay, I see. Uh, checking the flags, but uh, this is an x86. But is that uh, um, is such flag available on all of the possible architectures? Right? Can you do that in ARM, MIPS, or something? I, I know nothing about ARM and MIPS. That's why I'm asking, by the way. So maybe they do provide the overflow uh, flags. So. Mm. But all of that is not really cross uh, Almost spilled all of my tea. God damn it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Arm does have something similar. No idea about MIPS. Uh, I left MIPS Mafia. I see. Nobody leaves the Mafia. All right, so one of the things we can actually check here, I think, we can check address separately. So you start at address, right? And uh, you want to check if it's greater or equal than BM memory capacity by itself, right? By itself memory capacity. That means it's uh, it's an error, right? So it's straight up illegal memory access. There we go. Um, another thing. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so if address plus count Uh, if address plus count is um, hmm. is um, greater or equal BM memory capacity or um, address plus count less than address it's also that thing does it make sense i think it's kind of strange but hmm. 
because there is something interesting here, right? You probably have something like uh, uint64 like max. Is that even a value, by the way? Is that a thing? You insect. Okay, cool. So there is an interesting assumption here, by the way. There is an interesting assumption. The BM memory uh, capacity is strictly uh, less than this value, right? It's strictly less than this value. Well, count cannot be less than zero. Look, 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 look. Here's the count, and here's the count type. Here's the count type. Here it is. Here it is. It cannot be less than zero. It's, it's, it's impossible. It's impossible. Um, all right. Uh, no, you. <laughs> okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you have that. So, and address plus count address can happen only if this thing without considering any uh, overflows is greater than this thing right is greater than this thing mm -hmm. so which means that if this thing happens it's going to guarantee overflow capacity anyway. Yeah, I, I can see it now. So it's also guaranteed uh, overflow. It's also guaranteed overflow. We might as well actually check for that first. Check for that first and for that second. So if something like that happens, illegal memory access plus that. So on and so forth. Okay, so once we've done that, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a memory, uh, memory address plus i. Uh, and uh, what we're doing here, we want to actually print this entire stuff. Mm, U int count greater than address. Why did you flip it so weirdly? Um, all right, so let's print that. Mm. Okay, so uh, we're going to put it like that, and then uh, we're going to just do it like this, and then sort of consume this entire stuff. Mm. Okay, uh, we don't return here, and we have to return error OK. Uh, dump memory is never used. Aha, uh -huh. so that means we have to push it, uh, push it here. So it's going to be bm push native bm um, dump memory and it's going to be six. Cool. So now we have yet another uh, native function, right? We have a yet another native function and there we go. So yeah, essentially it fills up the memory and then it calls to the dump memory and we can easily extend uh, the amount of things we have here, right? Uh, for example, 30 and it will then dump, th it didn't dump 30. You know why? Because I forgot to use N here, right? I have a special uh, label here and I don't even use it. And I don't even use it. So, and there we go. So now we are actually incrementing it by 13. So we can try to do something that would overflow, I suppose. Uh, for example, 255. How about that? What about 255? Um, okay. So what about 56? So it's going to be, uh, it's going to go up to FF, right? It's going to go up to FF. So we're filling up the memory from zero to up to FF. Hmm. Like that you don't need to... Yeah, I, I see what you're trying to say, but I need to think about it a little bit harder to to evaluate. And I'm not, I'm not that concerned about security of this thing yet because it's not even finished from the design point of view. All right. So, um, and if we try to increment one byte, uh, so I think it's going to overflow. So I, I'm hoping the next one is going to be zero. Yeah, there we go. It actually overflowed. Um, it actually overflowed. 
So with a hand of 57, that's pretty cool. Hmm. I really like that. Okay, uh, let's actually put uh, 56. Uh, no. So this is how it looks like. Native dump memory, and you can dump at any particular time. Um, <laughs> All right, so there is that. And what exactly we implemented here? So here's a BME. Uh, implement GB style, but there, of course, debugger for BM. Route 13 example that reads write data from to the BM memory. Uh huh. All right. Mm. Where's the BM definition? Struct BM. Okay. Introduce memory into the machine definition. Definition. There we go. Um, mm -hmm. Introduce a dump memory native function. Uh, all right. Enable conversion. That's quite kind of important. Um, add a simple example that fills uh, fills up the memory. There we go. And I'm gonna push that right into the repo. Okay. So what other to dos we have here? I rename the notion of label to binding. Um, so it could be done a little bit later. Our 13 example memory is not the same thing as BM memory. Yeah, this is kind of the problem. So in Basel, we also have a memory, but it's not the same memory that you would think. It's a memory, like it's an allocator. Um, so let's actually rename it to allocator then. Uh, so allocator, um, ator, ator size, uh, ator. There we go. So it's it's specifically for allocating. Um, maybe yeah, let's call it something like a lock, a lock size. Right. It's, so basically, it's just an arena. Oh, okay, arena. So why not call it arena then? If if it's a basically arena, let's just fucking call it arena. So and it will make so much fucking sense. Uh, Alright, so let's go to the compilation errors and um, so bosom memory capacity back to back. Welcome back. Uh, Alright, so there we go. I'm just renaming some of this stuff. Uh, so what do we have here? Memory size, bosom memory size, query replace bosom memory size to arena size. There we go. So what else? So we also have Basm memory, and this one is Basm arena. Cool. Champion of the oh, that's what you're talking about. Okay. See, I see what you're talking about. Uh, I don't understand a single thing. You've come to the right place. I don't understand any shit either. Ah, <laughs> I've been doing that for 15 years. <clears throat> anyway, welcome to the stream. Uh, you think I understand anything? I'm as confused as you. Uh, so don't even worry about that. Just just enjoy enjoy the content. Um, all right. So it looks cool, cool. Um, so that actually fixes some of the problems here. That's that's kind of cool. Forty-eight um, bosom memory, bosom arena. There we go. And maybe it would make sense to actually cl uh, clarify what what the arena. Uh, memory arena, all right. So memory arena, region-based memory management. Yeah, there we go. I'm, I'm just gonna leave the link to this thing um, right here. Note right. for people who may encounter that and not understand what the fuck is going on here. All right. Um, uh, leave a note about arena, uh, about region-based memory management. Region-based. Uh, about the region-based 
Oh, what cage are What cage are And let's push that right into the Reaper. Right into the Reaper. Okay, go. Uh, I think after the two cups of tea, I feel way better now. Ooh, okay. So what are the other to-dos we have? Rename the notion of label to bindings. Do I have to have a separate issue for that? Do I really have to have a separate issue for that? I feel like I do need a separate issue for that because it will include renaming not only uh, the structures but also the directives and some supplementary notions that touch the labels and stuff like that. I think it's a quite heavy renaming and um, I think it is important to have a separate issue for that. All right. So, uh, I think I already pushed everything. No other pushes are required. So let's create a pull request. How about that? We introduced, we introduced the, uh, the memory. So, uh, I was talking about strings and I never created any issue for that. Never created any issue for that. So let's actually go ahead and create something. So the question is where exactly I'm gonna put all of this. Mm, maybe somewhere here. Uh, uh, let's go to the memory. Mm -hmm. uh, what is going on? Why I cannot? All right. Mm -hmm. Are you my product manager or something? Uh, no, there's no progress in that. And you can always check out the issue tracker. We keep track of everything in the issue tracker. There's no need to ask me that. All right. So um, let me see. Uh, so it's going to be a to do. Um, is it done already? Ah! You're missing all of the deadlines. We'll have to move that issue to the next sprint. Hurry up. Implement the loading DLLs right now. Implement them right now. Re re I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, to do. So, um, Basm does not support uh, string literals. Um, Mm, 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 mm. Get to work, exactly. Why are you working on non-important issues? Stop refactoring and wasting money of the company. Holy fuck. Uh, okay, so additional to do... Mm, to do... About string literals. Mm. All right. Still on part one. <laughs> Imagine a product manager on a stand-up meeting asking you, why are you still on part one? Hmm? <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so introduce memory. Uh, what kind of English is that? Introduce memory into the machine. Oh, it's it's actually okay. okay all right. Uh, I've been asked that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. Uh, Forty-eight static memory. <clears throat> cool. That is not Russian. You are not Russian. Got him. Ah. Just go to part two already, yeah. All right. Oh, that's a lot of focus changes. Ah, because we have a lot of copy paste uh, in the um, implementation of the behavior of the instructions. That's probably why. Oh yeah, we need to snitch all of that up. Uh, snitch uh, report introduce uh, prepend body introduced in. Introduced in 59, not even 69, SMH my head, string literals, uh, GDB style, uh, wrote 13 example that reads write data, blah, 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 rename the notion of the label to binding, 
Uh, and there we go. Here we have all of these issues. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? I think it's goddamn fucking amazing, mate. <laughs> all right. Mm. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> That's really strange. Uh, what what exactly happened there? <laughs> uh, oh, you were testing. Okay, I see. So it, it will basically randomly, like 50 50, choose between these two emotes, right? So, um, well, it's supposed to at least. Um, yeah, makes sense. It's pretty cool. So, what we're waiting for? We're waiting for macOS and Windows yet again. Linux already implemented, but we're still waiting for macOS and Windows. Mm -hmm. Alright, while we're waiting for macOS and Windows, I'm gonna go to the kitchen and turn on myself. Um, don't go anywhere. <clears throat> <laughs> you thought you're safe? Bad. Perma band. Alright, I think. Why are we still waiting for macOS and Windows? Hmm? Okay. Uh, let's merge this shit. To be fair. Uh, okay, I'm gonna add this thing to myself. Uh, Right, because this thing needs to be implemented right, okay? So uh, please uh, don't take this issue. I need to implement it myself. It needs to be done right. Um, okay, another one. Implement GDB. I don't care about that. Road 13, whatever. Uh, and I kind of want to implement this one because this thing, like, it's not really that important, right? It's just naming, right? Uh, so labels, I want to call them bindings. But for me, it just bothers me so much. And uh, I really want to spend some time renaming uh, the notion of labels to the notion of bindings. Um, and yeah, so this is going to be the next issue then. Uh, this is going to be the next issue. So uh, let me go back to the master and uh, fetch the latest changes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, it's, it's supposed to be merged. Why, why are you saying that this is not merged? Oh, shit. I forgot to push all of these mother flippers. God damn it. And well, there is only one way to do that, I suppose, is to rebase them on top of the master, right? Just to rebase them on top of the master, then go here and just merge with that thing, right? And uh, remove this branch and just push the master. Like, I mean, that's what, classic. Yeah, I know, classic. But you can always just rebase that thing. It's just no man. We have a 21 raiders from Donfo. Thank you. Thank you so much for the raid. And raiders, hello. Welcome to our epic virtual machine club. That's right. We're implementing a virtual machine. It can do shit, believe it or not. Uh, yeah. So uh, it even has a, an assembly. I think I already showcased that thing several times, but we can do a lot of stuff already. We, we recently introduced memory, so you can actually work with memory. We have instructions to write into the memory. Uh, we also have instructions to read from the memory, but haven't implemented it yet. Hello, Flask. Hello, hello. Um, I need to implement the ROT13 um, example. I think ROT13 example would be actually kind of cool. Oh, and speaking of the right syscall, oh, then remember how you said, uh, how you asked whether you can call right syscall from virtual machine? Now, technically, you can do that because you can implement a native function, right, that accepts um, 
the uh, beginning of the buffer in the static memory of the virtual machine and the size of that buffer and it will just redirect it directly to the Cisco write and that way you can even implement printf in the bosom itself right the only thing you will need is just the right Cisco and you can implement everything else in the bosom like all of the logic all of the conversion everything in bosom because the only thing you need to implement printf is just to write Cisco Basembler in Basem when we can, we can kind of do oh my god oh holy shit oh fuck ah so technically it's already possible if you think about that you just need to be able to read files and shit but yeah anyway so before we go into that I want to uh, just do a little bit of refactoring and rename labels to bindings self-hosted BM yeah probably maybe it's gonna be self-hosted at some point when we implement the translation from uh, bm bytecode to x86 it could become self-hosted at some point but what's the point of making it self-hosted I, I mean c is a better language than bosom so <laughs> the point of bosom is not to be better than c so it's kind of like a yeah it's just testing language to to um, to provide some input for the virtual machine so i don't think it's that useful all right so the branch 63 the branch 63 and uh let's go in bm we have a notion of the label right label capacity so um let's rename it to binding bindings capacity so this is now a binding so and this is exactly what we're doing here so in here we have a binding right so here's the binding you're binding a name to a value that's what's going on here you have a binding you're binding a name to a value and by the way my uh kettle is already ready so i'm gonna go already ready uh and pour myself some hot water for the tea so don't go anywhere or what Bye bye everyone. See you next time. All right. So uh, let's continue. So here we have a binding, and we have a bindings. Uh, bindings size. There we go. We also have deferred operand. I think I'm gonna keep calling it deferred operand. Uh, so resolve binding. Right, you have a resolve binding. Here is the name. Uh, bosom bind value. It has to be bind value. Um, okay, so this is basically everything I want you to rename, I think. All right, let's go through all of these things. Bosom label capacity. It has to be uh, bindings capacity. There we go. Uh, Basm resolve label. Uh, all right, so it has to be something a resolve binding. Boom. Cool. Uh, not bind binding. <laughs> very, very, very funny. Um, <clears throat> so label size. Bindings. Uh, Okay, labels. Uh, I think I'm, this time I can just call it like uh, query replace bindings. Boom. Okay, so this one is a value. Hello, Matusev777. Yes, we are doing a virtual, making a virtual machine. Bind value. There we go. That's what we do here. Um, so maybe it makes sense to replace some of these things like this. So this is the binding. It was a single place where we did that. 
Um, and this one has to be a value in my opinion. And that means this thing has to be a value as well. Uh, a value as well. Oh shit, that's it. Pretty much. Um, so we can now check. Uh, examples. Um, an example is going to be FibBM. All right, here, here is the Fibonacci Pi. Uh, what is your favorite language? Uh, check out my FAQ. This question is literally asked in FAQ, like down below. It's one of the last languages. Just go there and read the answer. <laughs> All right, so what is another thing? What is another thing? Um, so, um, mm -mm -mm -mm. memory. I want to take a look at the memory. Cool. So, but that's not enough. Um, I also want you to in, rename the directive. Like, uh, we still have a notion of the label. Oh yeah, so I need to now go through like every word label, right? So here is the uh, label and this thing could be called name. I think name would be better. So this is also name, uh, name. Mm -hmm. So this also has to be a name. Uh, this one has to be bind. Right, this is this has to be bind, this has to be name. Uh, yep, name, name, binding is already uh, name is already bound. Got him. Um, binding name is not provided. Uh, label binding. Okay, so this one is actually very interesting. So we have a general mechanisms, mechanism, mechanism of bindings, right? So, but we still have labels in some sense. So what this label does, it creates a binding with the name loop in and the value of address of this instruction. But it's the same mechanism. That's why I wanted to rename this to bind. Right, so you have a mechanism of bindings where you can take a name and bind it to some value that is pushable on the stack, right? And label is a form of binding. By putting a label, you define a binding with this name that stores the address of this instruction. Isn't that cool? So it's, it's the same like uh, kind of mechanism. I, th I think it makes more sense. And that enables you with doing things like push loop which effectively pushes the address of that label because label is the binding. It's the same uh, It's the same kind of binding as this one, right? It's just like a different way of defining a binding. Um, so I really like this idea actually. But we don't have a dollar one. So maybe we can have like default bindings that already defined for you, like dollar, which do uh, points at the current instruction. We can try to do that. Uh, I'm confused, good as you're supposed to be when you're doing software development. If you're doing software development and you are not confused, you're doing it wrong. You have to be confused. All right, so uh, let's continue. Mm, all right, BM label. So this is a label binding. Uh, this is a label. In this case, I'm... Um, okay, label. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, label is already... Um, Name is already bound to something. It is already bound to something. Label. Aha, uh -huh. so it's okay to call this label. And second path actually takes the name and uses that name. Uh, second pass. Uh, well, let's keep let's keep let's keep calling it a label anyway because it's already the name of this thing. Uh, a non binding, uh, and this is the name. Mm -hmm. So, what, what else do we have here? So, yes, it broke, and that's exactly what I needed because now we can do a query replace label with bind. There we go. So, now you bind a value to a name, 
Uh, and you repeat that several times here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another one. Another one. Cool. Nice. So we finally renamed everything. And how many uh, changes did we make? I think we made quite a few changes. Not gonna lie. Just to rename things around. Uh, all right. Um, so, and what's fun is that I didn't even expect that I'm gonna use the same mechanism both for bindings and labels. It sort of like evolved out of the spaghetti that I was just pile, was just piling on top of each other. So yeah, and it makes so much sense. I really like that. Um, all right. So now it's bind. Mm -mm. 63 uh, labels bindings there we go we still have notion uh, have a notion of a label but it's just a form of binding right so bindings can now come in uh, different forms and by the way there's two smileys uh, along like close to each other the, the sad one this is the sand smiley and the sad and this is the happy one really like that anyway so uh let's push that right into the repo um, all right so maybe i also want to test if it works or not uh, so it's going to be examples and in examples i'm going to just do pi uh yeah pi seems to be working e seems to be working and fib fib also working and memory stuff also working everything seems to be working let's push it right into the repo right into the repo people are launching fireworks yet again or maybe they're shooting i don't know it's it's russia who knows you never know uh all right so let's create a pull request are you guys ready for a pull request Pull request hype. Fireworks, yes. 63. Alrighty. So what's going to be the next thing? The next thing is going to be very interesting. So I want to start working on the string supports. But to have a string support, we need to extend the file format, the BM file format. So it's going to be very interesting. VBM mm, file format. Let's just wait for continuous integration. So because now, uh, along with storing the instructions, I also want to store the memory, the initial state of the memory of the virtual machine. Right? The initial... Um, state of the memory and it's going to store uh, strings and maybe some additional stuff that you want to put there I don't know uh, and all of that needs to be properly parsed and stuff bam.res uh, it doesn't have to be .res it's going to be a single file so uh, yeah we're going to also store everything just in a single file if that makes sense all right so let's just merge everything and delete the branch section.data yeah we're kind of gonna have like a section.data kind of like that <sighs> all righty uh it's gonna be very interesting it's gonna be very interesting mm. a out format uh i think i'm gonna have our custom format we're going to have our custom format. Um, alrighty. Mm -hmm. And let's paste all this stuff. Call it B out. <laughs> uh, why not? It could be B out. B out format. God damn it. You guys are so creative. We'll see. I haven't decided yet. Um, mm, uh, all right, 
so for now, for now, we're outputting things to BM machine. So the BM machine, right, keeps track of all of that. So you see, it has this thing. Mm -hmm. So, and when you're reading a program into BM, you actually filling up the program stack, the, 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 the program array. Uh, and also, especially if you're translating. So what I'm thinking is that now directives that contain strings will also fill up the memory. But to fill up the memory, you also need to keep track of how much you already filled up. And uh, I didn't want to initially introduce that thing there. I didn't want to initially introduce that thing there, but maybe I will have to. Um, well, it's kind of strange. All right, I need to make a small break uh, because I need to pee and stuff like that. And also I need to Google the solution. <laughs> I need to Google the solution. So it's going to be a small break. Uh, we will tell the kids uh, how we were present when the Binux OS was started. It's not going to be a big thing. I mean, it's just literally shit posting on the internet. It's not even that serious of a project. Come on. Uh, yeah, I need to Google the solution because I don't know how to do that. All right. Uh, let's make a small break, boys and girls. Uh, let's make a small break. And you guys uh, have fun. Yo, what's up? How's it going? How's it going, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so, yeah. I just need to keep track of the field up memory somehow. Um, just need to keep track of that. So maybe uh, using BM as the output of the program is not a particularly good idea. It has to be completely different format. <laughs> has to be completely different format. So yeah, we'll have to do quite a few refactorings. Uh, but in any case, let's actually go ahead 
and start doing that because this is a yak that needs to be shaved at the end of the day yaks needs to need to be shaved uh, string uh, literal we're gonna start working on that uh, thing basm does not support string literals mm. um, yeah so we're, we're gonna work on that in scope of this issue uh, uh, um. Can you shave a yak in a bike shed? Yes, you can, of course. What kind of question is that? Of course you can. Um, so I need to introduce the BM output. Um, the BM output. It has to be something like BM program. That's what it's gonna be. And it's gonna be like BM, but it's not gonna have a stack. It's not gonna have IP, it's not gonna have natives, it's not gonna have anything, it's not gonna get, have halt. The only thing it's gonna have, it's gonna have a stack. No, it's, it's gonna have a program, right? It's gonna have a program and it's gonna have a memory, but also uh, how much memory has been filled up already, right? How much memory has been filled up. So memory uh, size, so the memory size, uh, and this one is interesting because um, I also want to have a few directives for, for the assembly, right? A few directives. So obviously first is going to be bind uh, where you can have hello and then have a string hello world. And that would that will automatically uh, prepend it on to append it to, to the memory, right? But it, on top of that, I want to uh, also be able to set the memory size. For example, um, I don't know, 200 and... 56 megabytes or something right and it will set the expected memory here um, so I need to keep track of the memory capacity like the actual memory capacity and the memory size right so through that you can set the memory capacity and the memory size um, and yeah that's gonna be it's gonna be interesting so this is the memory size and then we're gonna have a memory capacity and also you have a bm memory capacity which is another uh, completely separate concept so we'll have to uh we'll have to do a lot of things uh, anyway all right so this one is interesting so every time you will add a string to the memory and memory size is we will overflow the capacity you will have to extend the capacity but then you through a directive memory you can set the capacity okay i think this is how it's gonna go i think this is how it's gonna go and bm program has to be the output for bm translation and whatnot right um yeah, yeah, yeah. so here we have bosom translate source right bosom translate source which accepts file uh, file path uh, bosom context so which is quite important it's a bosom context uh, and, and it outputs it to the BM right it simply outputs it to the BM uh, so now instead of BM we have to use BM program right it's a special thing uh, like an output of this entire stuff uh, if that makes any sense um, so maybe the naming is not particularly great hello Jigar Darbahar I hope I pronounced your nickname correctly not really sure what it means, but hello. I guess it's, it's your name. Uh, save program to file. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, and this is one of the things we have to uh, also refactor. So we need to have like a load program uh, from file, from memory, and so on and so forth. Oh boy, okay. So, and we need to have a separate notion of BM file. We need to have a separate notion of the BM file, which stores the program because the program has to be stored in a particularly compact format. So, yeah. Mm So I think it has to be called bosom output. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be bosom output. Yeah. Output. 
and uh, this is going to be bosom, and this is a bosom output. Um, mm, 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 mm. So bosom output. This is going to be very interesting yak to shave. Not going to lie, but this kind of refactoring is like is really needed for uh, for what we're doing right now. So let's actually go. Uh, bosom output. So yeah, of course this is a structure. Of course. Uh, so that means we'll have to type def it properly. Run. Yeah. Bosom translate source. So now here this thing is that. And uh, do we have an output? Okay, this is actually pretty cool. We don't have an output because the next thing here is going to be bosom uh, output. And uh, we can also call it bosom output as well. Bosom output. Alrighty, so what's next? Aha, uh -huh. uh, BM program size, we set the program size, size to zero uh, and that makes sense. Oh, look at that, line number. Where do we increase the line number, by the way? We increase it every time. Uh, so you can actually do something like this, I'm pretty sure. Do we use line number anywhere outside of this loop? Uh, yeah, I probably don't. Maybe maybe it's kind of like a sidetrack, so I probably shouldn't do that. God fucking damn it! <sighs> refresh your page chat. Refresh. I'm really sorry. Uh, this time it was a it was actually Twitch, I think. Uh, yeah, w welcome back, welcome, welcome back. So, um, yeah, saved. Uh, all right, let's continue. So this, we have to set the uh, bosom output program size, then memory size, memory size, and also memory capacity, also memory capacity. All right. Um, okay, so the next uh, compilation error is going to be here. Uh -huh. So every time we push, aha, uh -huh. BM program size. Hmm, this one is interesting. So we need to have something like bosom output push instruction that push pushes the instruction there. So that's definitely something we'll have to do. Hmm. So let me go there. So bosom output. So here it is. And what we're going to have here is uh, bosom output push instruction, right? Uh, bosom output output. Uh, an instruction is going to be here. So this is one thing. And another thing we want to be able to push is a string. Uh, but I'm going to change that a little bit later. I'm going to change that a little bit later. So for now, we only need this thing. Bosom translate source. So let's actually define this thing here. Right, so this thing will just push an instruction. Um, and also automatically will check for all of the overflows and stuff like that. So we're going to assert bosom output uh, program size is less than bm program capacity like this and then we're gonna do bosom hello infinito in, in infinito i hope i pronounced anything correctly uh output program um right so this is gonna be program size plus plus and we're just setting this instruction right here all right so and since we're gonna use this thing to push an instruction into the um into the output we don't need this check anymore because effectively this check was moved uh to push instruction so hopefully that will suffice okay so we're also translating the source so now this is going to be that and this is going to be bosom output there we go uh what else do we have here uh all right mm -hmm. So we bind value. Oh, every time you encounter... So this is exactly what I was saying, right? Label is just a special binding where you bind the label name to the current instruction. It's literally that. 
Uh, it's it's even explicitly set in the source code. I really love how explicitly you can just say that in the source code. It's just amazing. Um, yeah. Maybe we can have some sort of a functions. Um, so the program size. Uh, the program size is, could be something like uh, word u64. Word u64. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, and this has to be like a bosom output. It's going to be bosom output. And we do need these kind of functions to, to easily create the values of, of words um, and stuff like that. We'll need that at some point. Uh, and uh, we don't have such function yet. Okay, let's take a look at the word definition. Here's the word definition and let's create this function. Uh, so here is that uint 64t and it's gonna be unit 64 and let's create uh, this thing for all of them. It's gonna be i, uh, this one is gonna be i and this is gonna be that, this is gonna be f. You just got electricity cut, huh? For what? Did you pay for your electricity bills? <laughs> um, it's kind of Maybe you just forgot to, to pay the bills, like, shit happens, it's understandable. Um, Alright, so let's implement all of that. Uh, where are we going to implement all of this? So it's, it's going to be implementation, let's put it here, and it should be pretty straightforward, I'm not going to lie, chat. It's going to be just like that. Uh-huh, and a boom. Ah, Alright, so I can return. No, it's someone being dick. Oh, are you even are you living in one of those countries where this kind of shit is okay? I see. Well, yeah, I'm living in one of those countries as well. Uh, all right, it's understandable. Um, so, and then we're gonna have as this, and it has to be like a dot. And we're gonna do it like, and mm -mm. how about that? Can your Vim do that? Can you Vim do that? I don't think so. Um, so uh, let's continue. Uh, so if, did I forget to do return? Uh, you are, uh, well, it's, god damn it, I think. I was hoping that it will use different things here. I think it will use different things here. Uh, but it didn't actually, so it's kind of weird. was kind of weird. Okay, so what do we do here? Um, oh shit, I see. Oh shit. Okay. Mm, because of the way because of the way we push an instruction, like bosom push instruction is kind of useless, I think. I think it's kind of useless, so that means I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to retract, retract my statements, retract. Um, and actually put this stuff here. All right, so if we manage to get the type of the instruction, uh, that means we need to check this thing here and bosom, bosom uh, push, actually, let's go back, bosom output, output push instruction, mm -hmm. push instruction, so we don't need that shit anymore because we're directly manipulating this kind of stuff. Uh, all right, so what else do we have here? Uh, so that means this becomes bosom output. So we take a look at the program and this is bosom output. Mm -hmm. All right, another thing. Uh -huh. So number literal as word. Hmm. So this, by the way, when we implement, when we implement, string literals we're going to implement them inside of this function so essentially what this thing will do it will uh parse any literal so bosom uh translate translate literal 
and essentially if it encounters a string it will add that string to the memory and output the address of that string so that's how it's gonna go yeah that's how it's gonna go uh, but not for now not for now so it's just a uh, you know for the future uh, so in here we do a uh, number literal as word so we take an operand and we assign that bosom output bosom output all right uh, bosom output program size what else do we have here bosom uh, output program plus plus one what else do we have here so here we have a second pass. Uh, here we have a second pass. So that means bosom output program. I'll just iterate through all that. Um, all right. So oh yeah, this one is interesting. This one is interesting. So in the B in, in the bosom itself, right? In the bosom itself, uh, we also create BM and stuff like that. But we don't have to do that anymore because uh, we have bosom output. So we're gonna have bosom output. Uh, output uh, bosom output so it's initially going to be filled with zero right it's initially filled with zero and uh, here we're just using that bosom output uh -huh. and we need to have something like bosom output save to file yes that's right. So that's basically how it works. You see, so we have a BASM context and the BASM output and the file. So what this thing does, it translates the file into the BASM output, modifying the BASM context, context and so on and so forth. Uh, and then uh, we just output it to the file. So this is kind of interesting. Do we really need a separate BASM output notion? I'm just, I just, re I'm just realizing. Would it be better to just keep all of that as the part of the bosom context itself? Wouldn't it better? Because that's what it basically is, and it would actually simplify a lot of things. Because yeah, it's this kind of thing is only needed for bosom anyway. So wh why not? Like why, why, why care? Hmm. Maybe this is exactly what I want to do, actually. And in a bosom translate source, we'll be able to get rid of one of the arguments. Why didn't I think about that before? All right, bosom input file path, you translate in that, and there you go. Okay, I think that's exactly what I'm going to try to do. So here are the bindings, deferred operands, the arena, and I'm going to just include everything here and get rid of the notion of the bosom output. So you see now I'm removing this entity. So you can actually see my whole uh, process, like design process. I just try things and then I realize that some of the things can be compressed and stuff like that. And then I go to refactor again. So this is how like real software development actually looks like. Right, so here's the single context. And um, again, uh, I want to get rid of the bosom output in, in all of these places we pass bosom anyway, so. Yeah, um, and it will simplify so many things in the future. So here we go, bosom output, and uh, yep. So, and in here, do we need to actually clean everything up here? It feels like it's, there's no point in cleaning everything up here. It's just, oh yeah, you definitely don't wanna clean up anything here since we're gonna call this thing recursively. Oh shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's actually quite important to not even clean it up. Okay, that's cool. So now we don't even need that, uh, and bosom output, yeah, okay, so maybe within the whole function, within the whole translation function, I can replace bosom output with just bosom, right, and uh, yeah, cool, oh shit, I really like that, um, so and now you don't need that in here, and you don't need that in here, cool. And we don't have this thing here, and we, we can do something like bosom um, save to file, where you're gonna accept the bosom and it's just gonna dump this thing to the file. 
That is so cool. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. Um. Hmm. It's actually. I should like that. I think it's cool. Uh, all right. So how are we gonna implement this function? Uh, where is the bosom section? Bosom uh, translate here it is, and uh, in BME save to file. So this is gonna be the output file. So uh, yep. So the bosom is gonna be just a pointer, and output file is gonna be path like this. Uh, we can also try to, you know, do a string view, why not? Maybe not, maybe it's, it's just like overkill. Okay, so this is going to be the function and we just need to implement it. Let's implement it nearby the translate source uh, implementation, somewhere here. And I'm going to just do assert, assert false uh, bosom save to file. Um, not implemented. <laughs> that looks cute. Looks very cute. Uh, implemented. Alright. So is it gonna compile now? Uh, yeah, we have a bunch of unused variables. Uh, but we're gonna use them a little bit later. And uh, yeah, yeah, so it, it tried to save that, but it didn't work. So where's BM uh, save? program to file so I think we just need to repeat this implementation where we open a file and just dump the whole program there uh, we just simply dump the whole program there and I guess yeah that's gonna be a similar situation here since we're not implementing any new features uh, bosom save to file I'm just gonna copy paste this into this stuff All right so and then here uh, is gonna be BM Bosom program size and is that working? So file path, uh, yeah. Let's go with file path. Why not? Okay, so nice. That's pretty interesting. Hmm. Bosom safe to file. Bosom safe to file. All right. So we can also check how the rest of the stuff works. Example uh, fib. Does it still work? It does still work. Look at that. That's nice. So we did a pretty major refactoring and nothing got broken. What's up, Aguiduk? Welcome, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? How are you doing? And also introduce these uh, things that I probably want to utilize. So let, let me find all of the places where we potentially may use them. Huh. As. Um, as. Huh. We don't even use it that often. Interesting. All right, so what's that thing? So it's 60. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and I need to commit that. Uh -huh. Make bosom context store the output of the translation uh, and we also introduce the memory okay and also to introduce the memory so maybe the time has come to improve the file format since now bosom is actually kind of powerful right so it also stores its own like output and stuff like that uh, we need to structureize the file format a little bit better right so how can we even do that how can we even do that? So here is that. And let's introduce some sort of a structure. Uh, type dev struct. And I want to introduce some sort of a BM file, right? So this is going to be the BM file. 
So this will define the schema of the file. So right now, BM file is just a array of instructions, but this is not enough for us, right? We want to store additional things there. We want to store uh, not only program instructions, but also the memory, right? Um, and not only the memory, but also the memory capacity. So the memory that can be stored in the file may not be the actual size of the memory. You can, for example, store five bytes of uh, data, but you can also say that the capacity has, has to be one megabyte. So what that means, that means the emulator has to allocate one megabyte of memory, right? And fill up these five bytes there. So they're gonna be available in the memory. So you have to store like quite a bit of information there. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? Like quite a bit of information. <laughs> Uh, so how are we gonna store all of that? We we need to store this, uh, in usually um, in this kind of file formats. You have oh, a meta metadata, right? Some sort of a metadata. Some sort of a metadata. Mm hmm. Hmm. I see. Uh, we're gonna go with a BNG approach. Uh, BNG. Do you guys remember this project, BNG, when we implemented like a completely new format for the web? Uh, so, and in bng.h, we actually define the file, uh, right? BNG, there we go. So essentially what we have here, as you can see, um, right, is just some sort of uh, metadata and then the pixels themselves. I want to uh, kind of implement something similar and we'll need to have the, the pact here as well. So let me actually put uh, like um, pact and we'll have to steal that uh, code from, from this thing. It's, it's quite important for this thing to be packed. Uh, but what if I, if you have like several sections? I wonder how it's gonna even work. I don't think it's gonna work that well unfortunately. Right, for example, if you have two sections uh, with program and the data, is there any convenient way to do that, right? So you may try to introduce something like struct, um, right, bm uh, file program, uh, program, which is gonna do something like, uh, maybe even you in 64, or maybe 32, I don't know. Uh, program size so it stores the program size and then we use flexible array member uh, flexible array member to store the instructions like this and then you can have another interesting section something like type def struct right that will store the um, memory size uh, memory size and also memory capacity uh, and then uh, you can do something like you int 8 uh, memory so memory size will dictate you how much uh, bytes uh, you have in this memory and memory capacity dictates how much memory the machine has to allocate. So it's going to be BM file uh, memory. And the question is, can I have these two things in a row? Like program, uh, program section and memory section. I have a feeling that no. I have a feeling that no, because then the compiler doesn't know. Um, it, it's kind of a BSS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. If that won't work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And my intuition tells me that it's not going to work either. So, <laughs> uh, that's my intuition as well. Inst and map. You don't need that. So, what would be even better approach uh, to this kind of situation? Uh, Um, stored like the pointers, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, probably separate some stuff. Uh, probably just have this size together at the beginning. Yeah, could be that. Mm, then have the program plus data at the end. Probably that's another way to do that. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or, okay, we can have something like, all of that is packed as well. Right, all of that is packed. 
Ship 8 emulator. Sure. And you feel that you're really rubbing your shiny head a lot. It's actually quite cool, not gonna lie, I really like how rubbing it. Especially when I like shave it recently, it's just so good. Oh my god. It just calms me down. Um, so in the BM file, right, in the BM file we can have uh, some interesting stuff, right, some interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, so program file meta, right, we can have a program file meta. Of course, we can also have something interesting here, for example, um, magic, right? And that magic is going to be uh, BM, right? So let me let me try to do that. Um, print F BM uh, hex dump minus C. So and I suppose we, this is going to be our magic, right? So we're going to put it here. Uh, isn't going to be like that. I think I have to swap them. Uh, in our case, and I can then define BM magic, right? So this is going to be our BM magic, um, and it has to be equal to that. Then we can have uint64 uh, program size and uint64 um, memory size, and also memory capacity. There we go memory capacity and uh, essentially what you're doing you're loading a memory buffer you are slurping the memory buffer you're just slurping it right and then you cast the pointer to that buffer uh, to this structure and you look at the you verify the magic you look at the program size memory size and uh, memory capacity and you can verify the size of it and ensure that it does look correct and then, knowing the offsets, uh, you can find the array of program, the array of memory, and just do all of this stuff. Um, yeah, and then uh, after that, I suppose you can just save all this. Okay. Um, what did I remove, by the way? Yeah, I removed that shit. And binary. Okay, okay, that, that, that's cool. That's cool. So we only need this thing. Do you think C is easy to learn? Depends on the learner, I suppose. I'm going to code in C on the, uh, in the university. Well, good luck. Uh, do you have any prior experience with programming and especially low level programming? Uh, I guess no, if you ask this kind of question. What is PACT? It's an undefined name. So it's a name that does not exist, as you can see. Uh, our compiler didn't even recognize it. It's not even a macro, it does not exist. It literally does not exist. So it's a non-existent name. Right there. But uh, we can define it. So let's actually try to define it. Uh, yeah, we're going to define it like this. So let me put it somewhere here. Mm, so this is how we're going to define it. Right. So essentially on GNU C and Clang, it's going to expand to attribute packed. And what is attribute packed, you may ask? So this is more interesting question. Uh, you can specify the packed attribute, a variable attribute on the fields that members of a structure or union. Oh, God damn it, it's actually cut it off. It specifies that a member field has the smallest possible uh, alignment that is one byte or a variable field and one bit for a bit field unless you specify a larger value in the alignment attribute so essentially okay so this is a really bad explanation um so here's the thing um c compiler can pad your structures meaning that it can insert um where is the structure it can insert some empty bytes between the fields right you may think that these fields um uh that these fields um go consequent in the memory but it can actually insert like uh something like this i don't know uh padding and the, this padding data is not going to be used for anything it's not it's literally not going to be used uh, for anything uh so it's just needed for, for a faster memory access 
or for memory access at all, depending on the platform, because um, yeah, it also has to be some particular size and whatnot. Um, or to have some uh, uh, memory access at all, because on some architectures that you like, you can access memory only with a particular alignment, right? So, and by specifying packed, you you tell it just not don't do that. <laughs> so, and uh, Jiang also provided a pretty pretty good link, I suppose. I never read it, but I would assume, yeah, that's a good one actually. I should probably read it as well. Yeah. Because I don't know that much about uh, you know uh, structure alignment and stuff. It's just my it's just my intuition of how it works. Uh, anyway, so now I should be able to compile that, and as you can see, it compiles. Uh, packed attribute ignored. You what, mate? Why the fuck it was ignored? Do I have to put it here? Ah, that's cool. Okay, that's actually pretty cool that it tell me that uh, it ignored it. Nice. Alrighty, so now let's try to go and do bosom uh, save to file. Bosom save to file. Right, so when we're saving to file, I need to prepare the bm uh, file meta, bm file meta, and we're gonna put it like that. So in the meta, uh, where is the definition of this thing? Right, in the meta, uh, what we're gonna have? Uh, we're gonna have magic and shit. I'm gonna have magic and shit. So magic is gonna be BM magic, right? Program size, uh, we do know the program size. We can take it from the bosom itself. Uh, program size, there we go. Memory size, we also know it. Uh, it's gonna be a memory size. And also memory capacity is also available in there memory capacity there we go so here is the meta and the first thing we do we do f write um, meta pointer size of meta um, yeah, yeah so we're writing a single element there right we're writing a single element there and i think we also need to do that check every time we write something yeah, I think it needs to be done every time we write something. Okay, so we roll that meta information, right? We roll that meta information, then, then we write in a program, and then we need to write the memory. Okay, let's try to do that. So uh, it should be pretty straightforward. I just need to replace program with memory, and that should be it. So that's it. So now it will write in this very specific format in this very specific format. Um, mm, 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 mm. So, and I also have to do something like this. Okay, uh, cool. Oh, and it actually worked already. We can we can take a look at the hex format of these things. Uh, so if we take a look at the example, uh, at the example of Fibonacci number, for example, Fib BM. Would you look at that? We already have BM. So here's the magic number, and we can take a look at the hex hexel mod. Uh, yeah, so here is the BM, and uh, so what's the size of this thing? I suppose it's like eight bytes, and some particular point. Yeah, I think it works. I think it. I think it kind of works. So right now we have zero memory, so we store zero memory there. Um, so yeah, it works out. Uh, on top of that, it was suggested by Katul to use some sort of a, like a, a versioning um, in BM. So I think I'm gonna actually bake that into the uh, format as well, All right? So let's take a, let's take a look. Some sort of a version, yeah, yeah a file marker and versioning. So this is actually what we're doing here. I think I'm gonna close this issue after I'm done with that. So I'm gonna go to bm file, uh, bm file meta, bm file meta, and after magic we can also add a version. And the question is, what size of the version we should have? So how many versions we're gonna have? Is 64,000 uh, versions enough? What do you guys think? Are we gonna have more than 64,000 versions? <laughs> um, not enough. Okay, because you can't have a 69 for 20. All right, so... That's a really strange reasoning, so let's actually... <laughs> let's actually do that. Um, all right, version. All right, 
Uh, so, um, so BM file magic, I want to call it BM file magic, and this one is going to be BM file version, and the current version is going to be one. So this is the first version. Mm. For 2069, yeah, at least that. So, and every time we change something in the format, we'll have to increment the version, and we're also going to check um, when loading that file um, if everything's okay or not. Uh, all right, so BM file magic, BM file magic, then we have a version, a BM file version. There we go. And is it gonna work now? Cool. Uh, so let's take a look at the definition of the format in the examples. Obviously this shit is not gonna work by the way. It's it's not gonna work at all. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, I, I think we, we can see that. So it says the version one. So the first two bytes here specifically, right? So here's the magic and the first two bytes here. And uh, yeah, then the rest of is the program and so on and so forth cool mm -hmm. and uh let's actually try to execute one of these things i'm pretty sure it's gonna say that the size of the file is not divisible by the size of the instruction because that's the only criteria that you need to meet to execute this file which is kind of dumb but i mean it worked for some point yeah, there we go. So as you can see, the size of the file is not divisible by the size of the instruction. And that's the only criteria to verify the executable file. <laughs> so dumb. Uh, but it worked so well for so long. I really like that. Uh, alrighty. So uh, what's going to be the next thing? Um, uh, we were doing like a load program for memory. Do we even use load program for memory anywhere? Uh, we use it once. Wait a second. Yeah, we literally nobody uses that. I think we. I think it's useless. Uh, we'll have to remove that. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Sixty. Um, keep in mind that MSCC don't have attribute packed. It's almost like I. It's, it's almost like we had like a discussion about that, and we, we were thinking what would be the best solution. And backseaters, am I right? So they don't give a shit, right? But it's what I mean. What the support? It's a mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, introduce the uh, BM file schema. Okay. Also, I think I could have actually amend this thing. Yeah. Uh huh. 60. Make a uh, bosom save to file. Uh, use the new BM file format. All right, cool. Uh, so now I need to remove load, yeah, for, file from memory. Uh, load from memory. Uh -huh. From memory. So this is straight up a dead code. Nobody fucking uses that. Cool. Uh huh. 16. Remove. Remove dead code. Cool. So there's another thing uh, that I'm interested in. BM save program to file. I think nobody uses this thing either. Yes, I was right. Uh, BM save program to file because it was replaced by with BASM save program to file. So it's not needed anymore, literally. Uh, as you can see, yes. Um, now BM load program from file. So the only thing we need to do here is to migrate this function to the new file format you see so that's what we need to do here all right there we go um so 
I'll remove that code. I, I can actually, you know, amend that. And now, uh, yeah, this is how much that code we removed. So this code was useful at the beginning of the development, but now it's actually obsolete. So it's quite important to clean it up. Um, yep, 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 yep. Yep, 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 VM load program from file. Okay, cool. So what essentially we're doing here... Oh, shit, this one is interesting. So here is that. We know the size of the file. We know the size of the file. Maybe we don't even need to know the size of the file, actually. Uh, I think, oh yeah, that's actually so cool. So essentially what we can do, chat, is um, just first read the metadata. Just read the metadata. If you can read the metadata successfully, okay. Verify the metadata, cool. Then uh, read the programs and verify, uh, read the program and verify that the size of the program corresponds to what you expected, right? And then read the memory and also verify that it uh, corresponds to what you expected. So you don't, we can actually read that by sections and that will work so well. Holy fuck, I, I really like that. Yesu, 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 kawaii desu. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so and we don't need any of this sick stuff or anything like that. I think it's gonna be... Uh... <laughs> Um, I think it's going to be okie dokie a karaoke. Uh, I'm going to remove that, remove that, remove that, I'm going to remove could not consume file. <laughs> Why did I word it like that? Why did I use consume? <laughs> uh, consume the com file. All right. Um, all right. Yeah, that's exactly how it's gonna look like. Um, <clears throat> so we open the file and uh, cool. Now I'm gonna define BM file meta, and here is the meta is gonna be filled with zero. Cool. F read, and I'm reading the meta. Uh, let me take a look. Man, F read. It's actually getting cold in here, so changing. Again, all right. Uh, so this is going to be the pointer to meta, and the size of that thing is going to be size of meta. And how many things we want to read? Read? Uh, we want to read one uh, from f, and we're going to also have a count here. So uh, what we essentially expect here, if n um, not equal to one, right? Maybe less than one, right? This is an error straight up. STD error, error, could not read metadata. Metadata from file, s, and the explanation is gonna go here. Uh, two, 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 two. So the file is the file path, and the explanation is gonna be str error, error, no. Error, no, error, no, please, no error. And then we're gonna exit with one, of course. Ext, cool. So now we have a metadata. Next, we need to verify the magic number. So meta magic, uh, magic, magic, equal BM file magic, right? If it's not equal to the magic, this is straight up an error because this is not an expected thing, right? It's just, it's not a BM file. Mm, so what we can say in this particular case is to the error. Uh, uh, something like this does not, does not appear to be a valid BM file. Um, you're not a magician. Uh, does not appear to be a valid file. Magic. Um, unexpected. Unexpected. So 
let's actually split these things a little bit. Uh, unexpected magic. And we're going to put something like uh, 04x. Right, 04x. And we're going to put something like... Why are you... What the hell is wrong with that? This is a multi-line string literal. Why are you complaining? I think Emacs is dumb, but anyway. <sighs> Should S got at the end of the message to match the other two uh, printfs? No, it is not required by the C standard. Uh, okay, an expected magic. Uh -huh. Expected this one, right. All right. So, and we're gonna have a magic, uh, right? I, I just wanna provide as much information as possible, right? So, uh, yep. Looks cool, I think. I think it looks cool. And then we can just crash all of that. Uh, all right. So, and if meta version not equal BM file version, right? Um, does it have to be equal? Do we even have a backward compatibility? I guess we're not going to have a backward compatibility. Um, error. Error. Unsupported. Unsupported version of BM file. Mm -mm. And we're going to just provide the version, right? Ex um, expected version D. So in here, we're going to have meta version, BM file version. And of course, I think I forgot to like have a new line here. Cool. By the way, now you can use uh, being FMT misc thing to exec your BM files. Probably. Yeah, that's actually a pretty cool idea. Uh, all right, so it doesn't compile because uh, this expects a file path. Uh, let's put the file path here. Um, okay. S is an unsupported version of BM file. Uh, that's a really strange wording, but maybe we can fix that later at some point. Uh, all right, so we verified that. So the next thing we need to verify is uh, program size. Right, program size. If program size is greater than BM uh, program capacity, uh, what we're gonna say? We're gonna say that the program is too huge. Um, STT error. We have to verify a lot of shit actually here. We have to be super careful. Um, error. Yes, we can actually do something like this. Uh, error s um, program section is section is too big. Um, the file contains. Uh, oh, we have to use this shit like pr. I U sixty four program instructions, but the capacity is PRI U sixty four like this. So yeah. So okay, program file path. Uh, so program contains this. So meta. Uh, is it? Yeah, it's, I think it's program size. It's it's actually U64, and uh, then we have program capacity. I think it's quite important to like elaborately explain what the fuck is going on because it, it's gonna really help in the future. Uh, okay, so what else do we have here? Error. Lu. Uh, really? So I'm not sure where's the where's the BM file meta? What does it contain? It's actually U in 64. Okay, so um, U in 64. So what do you want from me? 
Is that because... Oh my god, are you fucking serious? Uh, do I have to do some stupid shit like this? Because the literal is not... Oh, for fuck's sake, I think, I think it was that, literally. The literal was not the correct thing, so it was complaining. Um, I mean, I can... I could not be bothered to fix that. <laughs> Alright, uh, the next thing. <clears throat> uh, we need to check uh, that the memory size, uh, expected memory size, is less than the memory capacity, right? Or maybe we can also check something. If meta um, memory memory capacity memory capacity is greater than BM memory capacity, well, uh, we can put it like that. Mm -hmm. uh, memory section memory section is too big. The file contains. Uh, the file um, x the file wants uh, bytes bytes but the capacity is this bytes right so memory uh, capacity so here's the memory capacity and here's the memory capacity here all right cool um Mm -hmm. So, and another check that we need to do definitely is meta memory size, memory capacity, memory size is greater than memory capacity. So, which is also an error. So that means you uh, put more memory that you declared. Um, um, yeah. Mm. So, which is an error? Uh, okay, memory size. Memory size is greater, greater than uh, declared memory capacity. Mm. Memory size. PRU64 is greater than declared memory capacity PRU64 and we want to remove that so here is the first we have memory size and then we're gonna have a memory capacity there's so many things that can go wrong holy shit Okay, uh, load program from file. Um, okay, so we verified uh, everything here. We ever verified the meta. Now we can try to read the program itself. Right, how are we gonna do that? Uh, Fread. So we're gonna be reading that. So uh, BM program. The size of a single instruction is gonna be BM program. Uh, zero and uh, how many of them we want to read we want to read them read meta program size cool and uh, We already verified uh, that the size of the buffer will fit everything. So everything should be okay So this is a file from which we're reading And let's go ahead and read all of that. So uh, we already defined n so I can just reuse the n uh, Yep Welcome back cause it right there so if n not equal to meta uh, program size yet another error right yet another error so that means we couldn't read the enough instructions here um uh, fprintf fprintf um std error error s um, a red uh, PRU64. I, I think it's like a Z D because it's a size. I think this is how we do that. Yeah, Z D. Um, program 
instructions, but expect it, but expect it, PRE U64, something like this. And uh, what we're going to put here is N meta program size, program size. And also we need to print the file path. There we go. And this is going to be exit. Are we almost there, boys and girls? We're almost there. Okay, meta. Uh -huh. I in team. Thank you so much for seven months of Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our virtual machine club. Isn't that amazing to be part of the virtual machine club? It's goddamn amazing. All right, so we read the program, and now what we want to read here is to read the memory, right? We want to read the memory. So it's going to be memory, right? And we also want to verify that the memory was um, correct. Uh, N was not equal to memory size, memory size, uh, read bytes but expected that uh, n uh, memory but expected this bytes of memory section but expected this amount of bytes cool will we support more than one instruction in one line in the future why all right so does it compile holy shit it compiles okay um, so that's a quite elaborate way of verifying the file. I'm not gonna lie, but I think it's I think it's a correct way of doing that. Uh, so we're going through all of the possible situations. Yeah, that's cool. So now it just has two sections. It has a program section and the memory section. And now while translating things, we can fill up the memory section with some things. For example, strings, and I think that's gonna be cool. All right, so illegal instruction access. Interesting. So I think I did a fucky wacky uh, while reading some stuff. So I'm reading program and expected program. Oh, I see. I never actually set the program size though. I think. So one of the things I'll have to do um, after all of that is bm, oh shit, bm uh, program size and instead of n, bm program size, right, bm program size and bm program size, right, do we use n anywhere else? No. Uh, and this one is going to be BM memory size. BM uh, memory size. So here's BM memory size and if BM memory size not equal to that, BM memory size. Uh, all right, so is it going to compile? Aha, uh -huh, BM itself doesn't have any memory size. Ah, it doesn't need to, I see. So that means in this particular case it could be N. It doesn't really need to. Yeah, yeah, because... Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fuck yeah. So we successfully migrated to completely new format. Yes, so now the format is not just sequence of the instructions it also contains the memory and shit and we can verify that everything works correctly uh yep 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 that's super cool uh nice and uh the whole thing yeah uh-huh and effectively yeah 60 my great uh, to the new file format close uh, 14 and also close this pull request mm. uh, 19 right so this is 19 cool I'm gonna push that right into the repo so um, yep we have a new format 
uh, maybe we'll also have some sort of like a viewer of that format, but I'm not sure if it's really that needed. Okay, uh, I want to introduce uh, a new directive that adds the strings to the memory. Uh, that adds the strings to the memory. Let's see if we can do that. Uh, also, how can we know the size of them? That's a good question, but maybe it's not that important anyway, so whatever. Um, okay, so else if, uh -huh, else if, uh, maybe I'm at the right, uh, at the wrong place. Uh-huh. Okay, that's, that's cool. Nice. Include, uh, str. For now, I'm not gonna make it a, uh, a binding. To be fair, it would be better to have it as a binding. It would be way better to have it as a binding. So that means I'll have to modify, um, I'll have to modify the way it works. You know what? I think we already have, uh, how big of the, uh, of the pull request this is? How big of the pull request this is? Um, mm -hmm. Well, it's actually pretty big, but um, doesn't, uh, ex um, yeah. I think we can feed it. And the issue here is about what? It's about string literals. Okay, that makes sense. So, uh, srcbm.h literal. So I want to change the semantic of this thing. Uh, I want to call it uh, translate, translate literal. Right. So what it does, it essentially translates any literal to its value, right? It translates any literal and then gives you an output. It gives you an output. So in case of double, it, it will give you the output of double. In case of integer, it will give you output of integer. And now I want to make it so if it finds a string, it puts that string into the memory of Bosom and gives you the address of that string in the memory and also expands the memory size. So once you translate the literal, it will automatically add it to the memory. Right. So it will automatically add it to the memory. So let me now change the name of this thing. Um, translate literal like this. So now it's not about uh, numbers. It's not about numbers. Translate literal. There we go. Uh, another one. Translate literal as word. Cool. So I might as well commit it right away. Uh, 16 buzz number literal, and this is what we renamed here. So the naming is important. The naming is super important. Super important. Ooh. All right. Okay. Nice. So we are converting this thing into sister, but maybe we don't really have to. Because the thing we can do, mm -hmm. um, if sister, it will also need to. We also need to cut some stuff there. All right, so let me try to do the following thing. If uh, SV count is greater than zero and uh, SV data um, equal to that, uh, to this symbol, um, actually count greater or equal than two and SV data uh, SV count minus one also equal to that. We are get them good to go. So essentially, we can uh, do the following thing: SV data plus one 
as we count minus two so basically we shrink the uh, string view now we point on the whole string and now we need to add it to the memory now we need to add it to the memory and uh what i'm thinking is i need some sort of a thing here bosom um <clears throat> push string to um memory push string to memory we provide the bosom um <clears throat> we provide the bosom and the string itself do we need to provide anything else i don't think so and uh what's gonna happen it's gonna return us the address of where the string starts and we're gonna print it as an output so otherwise and by the way after that we can just do true i suppose but maybe we don't have to we can just do something like this um <clears throat> Mm. Wish support for single character. You can implement it. The, the source code is open. Just implement it. All right. So uh, if you have that, uh, try to open dialog in C sharp and it crashed with exception about apartments. Fucking Zoomer technology. <laughs> nice. Um, all right. So that's going to be the idea. So push string to memory and it's also going to check the boundaries and stuff like that. So. Uh, should be okay. Should be okay. So we don't have this function. Uh, where's the bosom functions? Uh, where are the bosom functions? Cool. So it's gonna be uh, bosom, bosom, and it accepts string view SV. So it's gonna be uh, pushing this thing. Translate, uh, translate literal. So we're gonna put it somewhere here. Um, cool. Mm. And also, this thing has to return a word. Um, okay. Um, now, so we do have, uh, we can assert some things. Bosom memory size, right? Bosom memory size. And um, if it's if plus SV size is greater uh, than BM memory capacity, then BM memory capacity, well, it has to be less or equal, right? It has to be less or equal. So the result, the pointer is going to be literally this word um, result word u64 u64 uh, bosom memory memory size uh, which we can just return afterwards so this is that and afterwards we can do mem copy um, destination is memory plus bosom memory size memory size the source is SV data, and we copy in SV count amount of bytes there. SV count amount of bytes. Cool. And um, next thing we do. Uh, next thing we do. Uh, we are incrementing the size here. We are incrementing the size. Uh, SV count, and if bosom memory size is greater than bosom uh, memory capacity mm, capacity we're also increasing the memory capacity basically setting it to the memory size so the reason to do that is going to be uh, actually clear later so essentially you will be able to increase the memory capacity from within the assembly with a special directive right so uh, it could be like the capacity could be greater than you put in in terms of strings right so uh yeah and it's going to keep increasing until you fill up the, uh, the whole capacity of your of your machine all right so there's some problems here bosom bosom doesn't have a memory size what the fuck excuse me oh because it's not a pointer it has to be a pointer uh that's pog what what exactly pog uh, what what, you, what i said uh yeah so you guys understand what, what i'm talking about that nice <laughs> i'm really glad to hear that uh all right so that looks cool 
The question is, is it gonna work? Uh, from Basm itself. Yeah, so that's kind of the point. Uh, so um, it's gonna be in the future. Right now, it doesn't really work exactly like this, but it's gonna work similar. So essentially, you can basically bind like hello, um, hello world. But that will only allocate memory enough for this string, right? So you may then later, we don't have the directive yet, uh, do something like, um, you know, 1000. So basically it will say to the, to the virtual machine that uh, allocate this amount of memory and also put these strings there, right? So basically you will have more memory um, yeah, in the future, but we'll see. Increasing memory from inside the VM. It's not from inside the VM, it's actually at compile time. You at compile time declare how much memory you will need um, and stuff like that. So, um, all right. Cool, everything seems to be compiling successfully, which is super cool. And what I want to do now, um, I need to create a new example. We do need to create a new example and the example is going to be hello, believe it or not. Uh, so we'll definitely need to include all of the native things, include uh, examples natives, has them. And uh, I'm going to bind a hello to here, hello world. Okay, so in the natives, what I want to also have is a function uh, right, which is going to be seven. Okay. So, uh, and then uh, we're going to do push hello, then push. So, what's going to be the size of this thing? How many characters we have? 12 native. Right. Okay. Let's see if this shit's gonna compile. It didn't compile. Hello is not a number. Something went horribly wrong. Um, I don't know exactly what, but. Uh, da -da -da. Okay, translate uh, literal. Uh, how do we call translate literal in the binding? Uh, okay, so chop. Aha, uh -huh. so this is a bind. We take the name, right? We, we got the name and we take the value. I see. So that's kind of dumb, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I think instead of value, we have to use the whole line. Because like, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, we can just use the whole line uh, and then just bind it. Uh -huh. Cool, cool, cool. So it's gonna be that. That compiled. That compiled. Let's inspect the uh, hello executable. Look at that. So here's the hello executable. What's this? What the fuck? We have hello world inside of the binary. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? I think it's goddamn fucking amazing, mate. But we don't have a right syscall, right? So we don't have a right syscall. Um, mm, 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 mm. So how can we do all of that? Right syscall. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's implement it, I suppose. Uh, show hex. I can show hex if you're interested. I don't know how useful that will be, but yeah, here's the hex. So, yep. Um, so here's the version. This is probably the size of the program, and this is size of the executable. Right, and it's going to be C. A, B, C. I think it's 12. Yeah, I think C is 12, if I remember correctly. C is 12. So, yeah, here's the size of this of the data. So, that's cool. Um, so, now, uh, BME. I need to go to the BME and I need to write BM. I need to do something like this. Um, yes, revert, please. Just, yes. 
uh, right, and it's gonna be seven. Cool. Uh, dump memory, memory. Let's put it this way. BM right. So this one is gonna return that, and then we're also gonna take the state of the virtual machine. Uh, so what we expect here is essentially the uh, address and the size of the buffer, right? The address and the size of the buffer. Um, how can we do that? So first of all, BM stack size, uh, stack size has to be uh, at least two elements, right? O otherwise it's going to be stack underflow. Stack underflow. All right, so then we have a memory address, right? Memory address. So here's the memory address. Uh, let's take a look at that. And oh shit, this is actually kind of similar to this situation. You know what? It's actually literally the same situation. So I'm going to just copy paste this entire stuff. <laughs> ah, okay. So uh, nice. Uh, and also at the end of this entire stuff is going to be bm stack size minus two and we're going to return error okeg so now uh, man f right so this is what we need to call all right so the the dangerous operation so what's going to be the pointer the pointer is going to be the following bm memory address pointer the size is the size uh, of a single cell there bm memory zero and how many of them we want to print there we want to print count of them we want to print them to std out there we go so that enables the virtual machine so we literally created a binding for f right for the virtual machine so it can print things from its memory into the standard output like directly with this kind of shit directly from its memory if it, if it wants to and uh being bright is a prototype oh it has to be static all right shut are you ready are you mother flipping ready to test the first try first try got cool your code hello bm the actual hello world It worked. It printed hello world, by the way. It printed hello world. So the reason it, it failed with the legal instruction access is because uh, I forgot to terminate the virtual machine. But I mean, it printed this. There we go. Look at that. It doesn't print the new line, right? It doesn't print the new line. Uh, let me see. So, and there is no way to add a new line here, because if you try to do something like this, you will get something like this. Um, which is really strange, like, uh, why it doesn't print anything? Um, but yeah, it doesn't, doesn't print that thing. So, um, it should, actually. Ah, I know. So because the size is still 12, yeah, the size is still 12, that's why. If I increased it, right, uh, and made it 14, only then, you know, uh, it would print that slash n. Okay, so how can we work around that without, you know, all of that bullshit? Uh, so, this string is located in the memory, right? This string is located in the memory. So, what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna push hello, which is the address, right? Then we're gonna push 12, which is the size of the string, uh, size of the string. And we're gonna sum them up, uh, as in plus i. So we're doing pointer arithmetic, chat, we're doing pointer arithmetic in the BM, in the bosom. Okay, so we have hello, uh, then you have uh, 12, and you sum them up, right? And you get this thing, right? This is your address, right? Then you wanna push 10, and this is what you have. It's gonna be 10. So the, uh, then if you call something like write eight, you essentially 
uh, writing 10 at address hello plus 12. Uh, right, and that consumes the whole stack, right? That consumes the whole stack. Uh, after that, uh, you can push hello yet again, then push 13 this time because you added a new character there, and then you can write native. So this is how we can do that, right? So basically append at runtime a new line to the string. Isn't that amazing? I think it's kind of cool. All right. So, and if we try to run that, first fucking try, motherfucker. Mm. Cool. We can now have strings and shit. And yeah, you can do point arithmetic. You can like fill up this memory and yeah. Why can't you just hello slash n? Because we haven't implemented that. Uh, Alright, so let me see. Let me go to the... Uh, just implement. Just implement. Uh, okay. Uh, translate a literal. Uh -huh. String literals don't support escape characters characters there we go uh, ta -da -da. Ta -da 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 -da. so what did we do here by the way so we we added natives and shit so here, right right i think the time has come to do a committee committee right mm -hmm. Uh, introduce uh, native binding for the right syscall. Alrighty, so what do we? Uh, what else do we have here? Um, yeah, we introduce the support for string literals. Mm. Introduce support for string literals. Um, why can't you just get a house? What's the deal with homeless people? Right? Just get a house. Just get a house. Ah. Will Basm support string interpolation? Well, for string interpolation, you need expressions. There is there are no there is no expressions in the Basm. So, uh, all right. So, okay. Um, and all, let's also add the hello world example. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, actually finally hello world in Basm. This is how we do that. So maybe in the future you can simplify that, but yeah, that's hello world. It's pretty cool. And the hello string is located within uh, the executable itself. So it's the population in Basm. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if you can implement some interesting uh, I vote for user input. Uh, feel free to implement it, the source is open. And to implement an input, you just need to write a binding for read. And yeah, adding new bindings is super easy, actually. All right. So I also, I think I'm going to add the showcase for the hello world example here. So it's going to be an E, I, example. Uh, examples hello bm there we go cool mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and 60 add uh, implement the hello world example and let's push that right into the repo right into the repo so how many to-dos did I introduce? I only introduced one. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and make the pull requestus. Let's make the pull requestus. Um, introduce um, introduce support for string literals because this is exactly what we did here. Uh, so should be pretty straightforward and we're gonna close the issue 60 and while we are waiting for continuous integration I'm gonna also snitch up all of that stuff so list um, unreported so there's only one unreported let's report that prepend body introduced in 
65. Why is it failing? Is it failing on, Lin on Windows? Yes, classic. It is failing on Windows. Nice. Um, 64. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Alright. Cool. So let's try to find out why exactly it's failing on Windows. So what causes the fail? Probably something with um, uh, with the types. Invalid. Invalid preprocessor command warning. We don't have a preprocessor warning in MSVC. Did you guys know that? Jiang, where are you? Did you know that? Um. Oh shit, okay, so... Yeah, and we do kind of support Windows and shit. So I guess we want to edit here. So let's, let's, let's make it this way. Uh, let's make it error. Uh, yeah, let's make it error and let's implement, uh, you know, this thing for MSVC. So for MSVC, uh, we're going to do something like this. So something, uh, I know that in something we have uh, some useful things here. Mm -hmm. So how do we check for this stuff? Uh, MSVC, okay, defined else if cool yeah else if defined msvc uh, and how do you do that in msvc does anyone know um index of all no this is not what i want yeah predefined pragma pack and pack this is not helpful uh msvc uh packed Okay, msvc packed struct uh, equivalent of gcc attribute packed. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know a slick way of doing it, but probably possibly do something horrible like this for gcc packed. Uh huh. Okay, then what the fuck are you, why is it so weird? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, cool. Uh, pack declaration. Oh, this one is interesting. So um, the problem with this, uh, the MSVC, is that it requires like a block, right? It requires a block to declare. So... Um, Mm-hmm. Well, that's very interesting. Um, nonetheless. Uh, so, define struct. <laughs> this is a good solution. I kind of like it. Then this can be used like this. Okay, so is that a, is that a good one? I would love it if this actually worked. It's okay. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Yeah. So the problem is that. Uh, let's go for this one, I suppose. Let's go for this one. So uh, GCC and Clang, I would presume, would support something like this, right? And for MSVC. Uh, I'm gonna take that one. Uh -huh. And also, I would like to credit uh, this thing. S s uh, note stolen from here. Actually, to specific uh, to a specific thing here. That does it not copy paste it properly. Okay, copy copy link. Thank you. Cool. Stolen from here, and let's see if it's gonna go well. So now, if I do pack, 
uh, define pack, and this one could be error. I think it has to be error, so that means you're trying to compile with something. Actually, if track is not implemented for this compiler, this may result in a program working incorrectly. Feel free to fix that and send me the pull request, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is the packed. All right, and because of that, we'll have to do this kind of shit, I suppose. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Pack. And then I'm going to have a type def. Uh, struct bm file meta bm file meta cool so let's see if it's this gonna work uh, this compiles and let's see if it's gonna work on uh, msvc um, I kind of want to still call it packed I kind of like this mm -hmm. implement msvc friendly friendly pack let's push that right into the repo so let's see if it's gonna work this time who knows packing structures is usually pain in the ass uh, because it's different on different compilers and of course there's no a standard way to do that because standard people think that you're not supposed to know how a computer works right you have to be completely abstracted away from the computer all right no efficient way of packing serializing structures for you you're too dumb for that the standard people know better of course fucking of course all right the moment of truth waiting for msvc waiting for msvc and msvc has passed and would you look at that it worked abstract it away from computer yeah so MSVC actually works nice. Um, cool. That's cool. So how big of the library this is? I think the, the library now is super big. Ah, it's 1,300 lines. It's not that big yet. A little chunky. Um, all right, and let's actually do merge pull request. Delete branch. Delete branch. Uh, okay, good. so do we have anything else to do? Do we have anything else to do? Everything is successfully merged. We got some sort of a notification. Um, uh, made it makeable with MC2. Okay, I'm gonna look into that after the stream because it's not related to the topic of the stream. I thought maybe it's something with a virtual machine, but apparently it's not uh all right so why didn't that close that okay it, it's a already closed that um so some sort of mechanism for loading native function comparison instruction i think i think i pretty much implemented everything i wanted to implement today so yeah i guess i'm gonna call it a day but i guess i'm gonna call it a day um so we did a pretty good job today not gonna lie we can take a look at the size of the the changes how much stuff did we do uh -huh. um, origin master let me take a look i just want to take a look at the diff so uh yep so this is how much we've done and uh, yeah look at that 543 insertions and 178 deletions so that's a pretty good body of work and we introduced like a new format and shit and it's super cool now we can even have a hello world but unfortunately boys and girls it is time for me to go thanks everyone who's watching right now i really appreciate it have a good one and i see you on Friday, unfortunately, believe it or not, I'm gonna see you on Friday because tomorrow's stream is cancelled. Tomorrow's stream is, can is cancelled because I uh, have plans for tomorrow, right? I'm gonna be busy for the whole day, but I'm gonna be home uh, at evening, so we may do an introvert party in the Discord. So uh, follow or like join our Discord to not miss the introvert party. 
So, uh, yeah, and tomorrow we're supposed to have Advent of Code stream, but since tomorrow's stream is cancelled, the Advent of Code was moved to Friday. So on Friday we usually do uh, like off-topic stream, like one off stream, not off-topic, but yeah. <laughs> so I decided that we can do Advent of Code instead. So we're going to do Advent of Code in Haskell on Friday. So check out the schedule for more information on um, different projects we're working on. Uh, right, so I finally updated the schedule, finally updated the schedule. Uh, also check out our VODs channel where we upload all of uh, our VODs for the streams, uh, from the streams. This uh, stream is going to be there, but tomorrow we upload them on the next day. And there you can find a playlist uh, with the um, virtual machine development. If you want to follow the development from the beginning, there is a first stream there where we started this project completely from scratch. Uh, completely from scratch. So we can watch this thing evolve. Uh, and yeah, as I mentioned, uh, check out our Discord server for an offline discussion with the community and for introvert party as well. All right. So thanks everyone for watching. See you all on Friday. Love you all. Mm.